Hey, what is up, everybody? Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, I don't know how many people out there are watching. I don't know if you're supposed to get a date or whatever. Hey, but if you're going to spend it with us, that works out, too. We're all here. In fact, we've got a new cast member. Well, he's not new, but he may not look familiar to some of you. He's <laughs> back visiting after, you know, I guess he's down business right now in the hitman job. He has nobody to knock off right now. So he's back to the panel, but... Welcome back, Average Joe from Buffalo. This is some kind of bullshit right now, is what this is. <laughs> Tonight's show, Joe is rocking his saber coordination, as you can see, because you got to coordinate. I so just got that all hooked up for Buffalo. I have to coordinate for you and your show. <laughs> no one else is. And of course, we got Eric from Eric Lions fan, who's in the house from Michigan. What's going on? How cold is it up there right now? Uh, it's about, I think I. Yeah, about 36, 38, 40 degrees right now. Oh, that's not bad at all. So you're in good shape. He and sure We got Todd, my boy Todd, Indiana. No channel Todd? yet, but we're getting him to the point of getting a channel. So Todd's Maybe, flying. we'll see. <laughs> He's flying solo. The last few episodes we've had Shannon in, and she's actually not here tonight. She's actually resting, but welcome, Todd. What's going on down there? Oh, uh, not much. Just uh, bracing for the the storm front coming through. I guess tomorrow night, but it's like fifty two degrees right now, so I'm not really sure how that's going to work. Yeah, this weather is kind of crazy how it jumps around. So Todd's yeah. actually going to the Tailspin Beer Fest this weekend, where it's supposed to be one to three inches. But he would not be deterred. He will be there. He will be getting his beer on in line. If he's out there in boots and it's snowing, he doesn't care. He's going to be drinking bourbon barrel stouts. Yeah, only in southern Indiana can you be flooded right now with all the creeks and then have two to three inches of snow in, within 48 hours. Yeah. Well, we're, <laughs> we're getting in Cincinnati the same way. We went to a flood yeah. alert. Yeah. And speaking about flood alerts, really, I really get tired. Like, I'm in the middle of watching a show on TV, and they stop it for the flood. Like, I know somebody might be near where the flood's happening, but, you know, they should be able to block it out to what counties are really being involved at that time. I kind of hate when it buzzes, especially now we get that new mess national message thing that pops on the phone and stuff. Just starts beeping in the middle of the damn night. Hmm. Oh, those amber alerts? Yeah. Well, that's my yeah, the amber and the one that they do for the national board now. Um they're pop they're checking everybody's phones earlier this year or last year. They were putting it out there. So now they're using those more. And it's like, dude, I'm I'm here in Northern Kentucky. Do I really need to know over in East Ohio what the hell is happening? I really don't. I don't. Just, you should just block out certain codes. You know the zip code where it's at. Just hit those zip code people. Leave everybody else alone. Yeah, they exactly. did that. They did that yeah, the, uh, yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday where I live in Western New York. We have lake effect snow off of Lake Erie all the time. Like Buffalo gets six feet of snow in fucking 48 hours sometimes. And it was a, there was two alerts, one after another, where, like it was one hour after each other. And it was just like, snow squall, drive slow. I'm like, uh, yes, I'm pretty sure everybody knows that around here. We can look outside and see what's happening. Like, okay, we've experienced this once or twice or a thousand times. I'm, I'm still pretty sure that weatherman is the job to get or weather woman or weather person, whatever you say nowadays, because you can still screw up on that job and nobody ever fires you for it, really. I mean, unless you do something bad, like, you know, sleep with one of the colleagues or something like that. I mean, you're usually pretty much safe in that job. You know, you can never go wrong. You're like probably cloudy, probably sunny. Who's going to say you're off, right? Yeah, yeah, that and booking where you can just be 50-50 and nobody really gives a shit. What are you going to say? Mm -hmm. What's your definition <laughs> of art? That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Somebody says, you're looking for a job you don't want to screw up? Weatherman, that's what you want, son. <laughs> you may or may not get rain. I don't know yet. We'll see. <laughs> So any young children out there, which young children should not be watching this show, but if you're watching, you're looking for a career path, that's the one to take, especially if you screw up stuff. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then welcome to all the people that are out there in the chat. Um, see who's out there right now. I'm so happy to have Joe back because Joe does really great. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't see anybody in the comment section. Okay. <laughs> My computer's still coming up, so I'll let Joe handle that. All part. right. We have Eric Gilbert says, Wow, St. Valentine Live. Geez, must put in some work. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you're commenting, so you, you must also be putting in some work. Yeah. Um, 
because later on he says, cheers, no whining about the snow. I'm not whining. I'm saying we get snow here. We don't need people to tell us by emergency alert broadcast system. Like, oh my God, there's snow. Look outside. Like we, we get it. It happens. Drunken one says, hey gang. Cheers, D1. What's that, drunken one? Yep. Awesome. Drunken one. Drunken one in a live stream. Never. Never. <laughs> Head coach says, hi, fellas. Thanks for the show. He's drinking a total domination from Ninkasi. Nice. Oh, That's a good nice. one. That's a nice one there. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. And 23KC says, hey, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, 23. Always yeah. nice to have you. So okay. tonight, I'm actually drinking a beer I've not had before. And had it probably not been for probably 450 North, which thanks again, Todd. Todd generously went to the brewery last weekend to get some beers, and package will arrive tomorrow. So look for that on Ooh, 450 yeah. North. A lot of good shit. It's like, what's in that box? 415 North. Well, what's in? Doesn't matter. 450 <laughs> North. <laughs> <laughs> but I am actually drinking a beer from Platform tonight. So this is Coffee Lawlessness. As you see there, platform out of Cleveland. Uh, this is Porter Brewed with coffee, grains, two-row, Munich 2, chocolate, beet smoked barley, special B, and victory hops. Northern Brewer East Kent Goldings Fuggle. The yeast is San Diego. And the adjunct, Brazilian Espresso. Now, I don't know if I should really be drinking these tonight. Like, by the time I get on the show, I got to go to sleep to get up in the morning. But we're going to test that theory out and see how that works out here. And this is uh, 6.2 ABV, actually 6.25, IBU 34, even Play-Doh 15.5. And the one thing I always give up for uh, Platform, which I really like about them, they put so many good details on their can, all the information you could possibly need or want. Um, and it's like, why can't every brewery just do that? Just give the basic information. And on the bottom, they put the uh, canon date as well. So you see that there as well. So they hit every every notch that anybody that actually knows about beers pretty much would probably want to look for. Even if you don't know a few of the things, just chances are you want to know some of the other stuff listed. So great job on their can. They're probably one of my favorite uh I guess you could say uh, can design people out there, breweries that do it, that put information on it wise, not design wise, but just information wise. They probably do it the best that I've seen on a lot of the breweries out there. I agree, Rod. Yeah. I do. Everything so you, I picked up from them is exactly the same way. Yeah, yeah. They 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 knock it out of the ballpark with that, and you know, don't have to go crazy on the design. And their beer speaks for themselves, so that's why people are blowing up, and enjoying their brews. So, what are you guys drinking tonight? Oh, go ahead, Tad. I'll start with you, bud. I'm drinking uh, Lunatic Blonde Belgian Style Ale from Wicked Weed. Nice. Nice. Picked that up when I was in Tennessee a couple weeks ago. I was going to say, I still don't get Wicked Weed here yet, so I didn't know if you were getting in Indiana or not. All right. No. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I thought they were supposed to get distro everywhere when they got bought out. What happened? <laughs> They're not doing it right. You're not doing it right, son. <laughs> so, so it says on the can that this was a silver medal recipient in the Belgian style blonde ale 2016 Great America Beer Fest. Oh, there you go. So, not bad. Pretty decent. Yeah, that's actually a good beer fest in metal. And it's funny because you'll see some cans and it'll be 2018 independent awards. Like, who? Like, you, you don't know what it was. Like, Great American Beer Fest is a good one to actually metal in. And what do you got there, Eric? I have a Dark Horse beer from Marshall, Michigan. There's Scotty Karate. Oh, good that's one. Nice, nice call. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Figured I'd go off the beaten path a little bit and just have the Scotch Ales. Why not? Exactly. I've always liked a Scotch Ale. I mean, do it up, son. Do it up. And then who's this other guy? What do you got over there? What, I got these. <laughs> yeah. I got exactly from the same brewery you got platform. <laughs> I have their safety scissors. Nice. They uh Berliner Weiss, uh malt, Pilsner, Pal Wheat, Vienna, Wheat Wheat Flakes, Hops <laughs> Crystal, Yeast American Ale, and adjunct. It says blood orange, apricot, and lactose. But then at the top it says L brewed with natural flavors. L brewed with natural flavors. Well, natural to someone. <laughs> I guess so. 4.2% so. and 4 IBU, so super bitter. 
not really, not, not at all. There's no bitterness. It's uh, it's pretty good. I, I usually like the kettle sours from Platform. Uh, you sent me the key lime pie one. I really yeah. enjoyed that. And I had another one from them too. Uh, they, they do a pretty good job with it. Uh, we get stuff in Rochester about 90 minutes away. And uh, whenever I'm in the area, I'll see if Platform has any new releases. So I picked this up months ago. It's been sitting in my fridge. So I figured I'd crack it open now. Well, how's that? We did not plan it out, though. We both had a platform yeah. over here. So yeah. Yeah. platform is just getting some stuff done for sure. Yeah. Let's see. What's anybody drinking anything out there in the comments? Uh, Bum. Bum shows up. What's up, Bum? He says, happy yeah. Valentine's Day. And then he said hi to Coach. He said Valentine, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you did there. See yeah. Did. We got you, Bum. We know what you're doing. Chris from off the tent says Joe showed up question mark. Nope. This is a, this is a hologram. <laughs> Justin S says evening all. Evening Justin. Good evening. What's up, What's up Justin? And uh, Eric Gilbert says drinking a Marston 61 deep pale ale. Oh, I've heard a lot of good stuff about Marston. Not a pale ale, a deep pale ale. Deep. Super, super deep. Scraping the bottom deep. And I'm sure he's double fisting because that's how Eric Gilbert rolls probably with the <laughs> bourbon or whiskey. Or he's have a whiskey with it or something. Yeah, yeah, he usually does. He's usually like, I'm drinking this, and then I also have this whiskey over here. It's like, yeah, you do. Yeah. We know how you roll. Cool. Uh, Justin, Justin S. says, I just have a Stone Ripper, which is their, their pal ale. I, I enjoyed that one when I had it. I had that a couple years ago. I haven't had it since, though. Have you guys had the Stone yeah. Ripper? Yeah, I think I did I a video on the Ripper that. like last year, I believe, or a year before. Yeah. It's decent. It's decent. It's pretty solid. Um, Sexton Bruin, Ashley shows up and says, Cheers, gentlemen. Hello, Ashley. Cheers, Ashley. Cheers. Cool. He, Eric Gilbert says, Like the cheap scotch. Talking about Marsons. Like the cheap scotch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Drunken One says, He's drinking a home brewed Irish red ale. Yeah, I said, Drunken One, I think you said you have a black lager going right now, too. I like me some Irish red ales. Yeah. You like drunken some, one's not the, drunken one's not drinking a Valentine beer. Not yet. Not yet. Give him time. He'll get there. <laughs> uh, we have um, Justin S says, "Oh, I'm on the wrong channel." <laughs> <laughs> Which channel are you supposed to be on, Justin? All of a sudden, poorly poorly reviewed beer shows up and says, "Now I'm on the right one." There you go. <laughs> That's pretty fantastic. Justin, yeah, it's been great to you've been you've been out of it for a minute or so, so it's good to see. I don't know if you're still doing the videos and everything, but I know you're still doing the Twitter for the blog. So. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Uh, GSHL TV shows up and says, "Cheers, Rod, you are a fucking legend, man." Thanks, thanks, brother. Now he's actually got some cool stuff up there, probably because he's in Canada. So yeah, and he, he does a lot of different live streams and too, Gilbert right? And Chris, yeah, yeah. And Eric Gilbert says he's eating wings. <laughs> what kind of wings there? What, what kind of wings there? Speaking of wings, last week, which I had to go in there for years and years and years, we were out running errands and it was time to go to lunch. And we're like, hey, you want to go over to Quaker Steak? Because I have not been to Quaker Steak in ages. So we went over to Quaker Steak and uh, they actually, you know, I got a small thing of wings there. The wings are pretty good. They're known for having good wings and their burgers are massive, like massive beer reviews, like massive, like. I have one of those too, but um, it was nice. The only thing that we ran into was the service was a little bit slow um, to get stuff done, but it is what it is. It's like I felt like we had somebody's like mother that was kind of hired on. She was like, just not moving fast as a younger folk, but that's all right. Not saying age discrimination, anything like that. It just took a little bit of time. So we were patient. We finished the beers. <laughs> you know, it is when you finish a beer, you want another beer. You're looking around, you're looking around, you're looking around. So, but it was all good. I remember the first time I saw one of those signs going down south, like thinking, uh, we go get your oil changed and then get you a steak while you're there or what? <laughs> it's like what is what is this place? <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've yeah, been so, to I've heard a lot of good things about it. Oh yeah. I mean it started out as a gas station. I mean, because you had a quicker state motor oil. So it's there you gas go. Station and I guess they were serving, they started serving sandwiches out of some of them. Maybe I don't know, back in the 60s or then or anything, but it's pretty neat. You go in there, you see a lot of the old like gasoline type stuff around it and stuff. So I enjoyed it. It was good. They ended up show. Uh, ended up getting into uh, Western New York here, but then they, they closed all their stores within a couple of years, unfortunately. Yeah. I, you got to be able to be in the right market, I think, to actually 
doing it's, that. The one, the one that we have here is like right next to a Harley Davidson dealership too. So I'm sure that mm -hmm. helps. Um, it's tough to go into Buffalo and then your thing be wings. Well, here's the thing: yeah, you went to Buffalo. You are coming in with wings? Yeah, I mean, it's like it's Good just luck on that. It's, it, I mean, I, I, honestly, I'm surprised that Buffalo Wild Wings has lasted as long as they have, and I don't even think it's because they're wings. It's just because they always have like UFC fights on and sports and stuff. Yeah. And just go there and it's cheap. But like, even the Wild Wings are starting to shut down around here, so and there's only a couple left. It's unfortunate. Well, for me, I would actually put. I don't know what you guys feel about it, or we'll talk about what you guys feel about it. Buffalo Wild uh, Buffalo uh, Wings. What do you guys think of it? Like, do you think like BW3 is all that good? With no. The wings? no, no, yeah. no, it's, so. it's, it's, it's the, it's like the, the macro of wings. I yeah, mean, it really is. I, wow. I, I, wow. I, I, I very rarely ever have like terrible wings there. Right. But like, I've never had great wings there personally. Like it, right. they're not bad. They're just, you go there, you go there more for the atmosphere and like, you know, someone's like, Hey, you want to go over to Buffalo Wild Wings and watch the so-and-so fight and get a couple of drinks and you might order some wings there. You know, that's, right. that's kind of around here anyway. That's kind of how they roll. I, I don't know Joe, how it is exactly everywhere else. Joe, what? Parmesan garlic wings, buddy. Yeah, they're fantastic. Just not from Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing I was going to say with them. It's more about their sauces, right? So you use like yeah. a certain type of sauce when you go there and everything. So, But I feel like when their wings are not as great as so many other places that we have that serve wings, but they got the notoriety and the name out there, so people go. Yeah, yeah the sauces are pretty decent, but the wings, uh, yeah, not the even, so I'm not even sure they're on the macro level, Joe. No, the, the, yeah. dude, like the salt, like the Asian zing from there, I think mm -hmm. it's fucking fat, pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I, I like that one. And even garlic parm, even though I was just joking, Eric, the garlic parm from there is pretty solid. Uh, th their sauces definitely are good, but it's just like, I'm not saying their wings are mediocre or anything. I'm just saying, like, you know, I, I bet most of us have better wing places locally that you'd rather go to, whether it's a local bar or a local mom and pop shop. You know, it's just, but it's convenient, right? And it's the prices usually are probably a little bit cheaper too. Plus, you can get deals, and people like to get gift cards around the holidays. Like, I got a twenty-five dollar gift call, or card from uh, my cousin from Buffalo Wild Wings, even though I don't know when I'm going to use it, but at some point I will. <laughs> Straight bar. I mean, a hundred wings for hundred sixty bucks. Yeah, I'll go in there for four beers, and I'm done. There's the gift yeah. card's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, a hundred wings for sixty bucks. Hundred wings for sixty bucks. Yeah, under really. Yeah. At least the last time I looked, I don't know what it is now. <laughs> well, it's like with their wings, and it's and I do another like another place that people like to go to is Hooters. I don't think Hooters wings are that good. I just don't, I don't think, think they're, they're either, good right. at all. How many people are going to Hooters for the wings, though? That's my question. Well, actually, I know people that like the wings there. They like, you know, and they women, are, don't, women, women don't go because they like the wings there. Are they, like that. are they breaded? I forgot. Are they breaded? Like bread in well, you can okay. get it without bread, and I think now too. But usually, people get the breaded ones. Yeah, so they're a little bit at least different than like your just normal, you know, regular wing. Yeah, at least to bring something to the table. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a little something, something. To <laughs> well, we have another place here called Buffalo Wild. No, not Buffalo Wild. Uh, Buffalo <laughs> Rings and things, and they actually have better wings than the Air Chain than BW3, I believe. So pay a little bit more, but it's definitely more worth it. But like the Quaker steak were better than the BW3, in my opinion. So hmm. uh, a couple of comments we have from Justin over at Poorly Review Beer. He says, yeah, this work schedule I'm on, it kills me. And when you're on night shift, you don't want to do a damn thing during the day. Is he taking people out with you? Like, are you guys competing? Like we're the nicest. Uh, let's just say we cover the, we cover the twenty four hours very well, Rod. It's just a competing hitman now. It, it might be a tandem duo. Who knows? They're on to Justin. Just we're not allowed to talk any further. Um, uh, Eric Gilbert says he's drinking Forty Creek and garlic parm wings. So there you go. There you go. He really got garlic parm wings. Interesting. I'd imagine he does. I don't know though. And then Justin says we've got a similar place called Wild Wing Cafe, pretty prevalent around the South. More TVs than B dubs. That's yeah. impressive. And that's a lot of TVs and B dubs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 210 Brewing shows up. Is it Andy? <clears throat> if it is Andy. Yes. Well, Patrick, I need to get his crap together. I'm sorry, that's a that's a hockey reference. I apologize. Um, <laughs> he says, uh, he says, cheers, guys. Awesome panel. 
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And then Eric Gilbert says, Buffalo Wild Wings sucks ass. Better bring your A game in Oshawa. I didn't, know, <laughs> no, I didn't know Oshawa had such an A game when it comes to wings, but you learn something new every day. You better step it up, son. <laughs> yeah, Justin says, hey, man, B-dubs brings the craft beer like stuff from Red Hook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although I will say our B-dubs here, they do get like rye guys now, and they get some of the other local craft brews. I think we get a little bit of man drinking. Yeah. yeah. Like I think every beer. market they do that, right? They they make sure they contact the local breweries and bring yeah, them we'll in like something. Time. We'll give you four taps. We'll <laughs> give four. <laughs> no more, no so, less. Yeah. Choose wisely. It's like uh, picture taps. The wrong four <laughs> up there. <laughs> Actually, damn, uh, mm -hmm. what's that? Go ahead. I said, get that damn lining kugel off of there. Go ahead. Oh Jesus, yes, please. <laughs> Ashley, Ashley, what? No summer shandy? Come on, oh, Rod. My lord, help us! <laughs> help us. <laughs> Ash, Ashley Sackler says nothing but class in Schwigity, which is Oshawa for those who didn't, don't live in Ontario. It's slightly more classy than Welland, which uh, isn't hard to do, Ashley. Even though you do live in Welland, um, Bum says people go to Hooters for the breasts, not the women. <laughs> <laughs> If I, only had a drum, if I only had a drum sound effect, I would hit that right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good one. Good and, that, and that's why Bum is amazing. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Eric Gilbert says, LOL, Sexton, you live in Welland. Shut it. <laughs> Got a little, little Canadian brawl happening before wow. my very eyes here. <laughs> Holsher Fishing says, hi. How is everyone doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? Cheers, Holsher. Welcome. Welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, Thrash Metal Homebrew and Barbecue. Cheers, all. Good to see you. What's up, buddy? Yes, welcome, Thrash. Mm -hmm. uh, Sexton, Sexton Brewing, Mr. Mr. Ashley Sexton, dropping some uh, exclusive. Uh, who used to be the DJ who used to do all the exclusives back in the late 90s? Was it Funkmaster Flex? I can't remember. DJ whatever, exclusive. <laughs> Was it DJ Premier? I was probably no. actually. Are you, are you saying world premiere? I can't remember. It was just be like yeah, it was a world premiere because that was Mr. Magic back in New York, WBLS. Oh. There, there, there was a ton of DJs that would always do that on a mixtape. Be like exclusives. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We're, we have an exclusive for you right now, and it's <laughs> Ashley Sexton says content coming soon on his channel. What? That's Whoa. a world premiere right Whoa. there. Oh, boy. <laughs> Breaking <laughs> news. Release the hounds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Wookie Brewing says, Evening, all. What's up? Welcome, Wookie. Good evening. Good evening. Eric Gilbert says, The Shawa has some great wings dive sons. I think he might be hitting the 40 Creek a bit hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, though. That's what happens to Eric Gilbert. Sometimes I'll get messages on my videos at like three in the morning where I can't read them because yeah. just, they're unreadable. But you know, I appreciate the comments, Eric. Always. Richie Z says, Hey, Rod and Gents. Hey, Eric Gilbert. Cheers, Richie. Cheers, Cheers. Richie. Uh, and then Eric Gilbert, you know, he has to bring in some politics. He says, Justin Trudeau is messing with his Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, we're not drunk enough to start going to the pod. Politic angle, but yeah, we got no, our own stuff yet. going on down here. <laughs> and then, and then, just to piss off our Eric, he says, "Go pack, go." Yeah. <laughs> here After we go I stir the pot a little bit, Joe. Yeah. Here we Only go your teams are shit. Lines, so it doesn't matter. So. <laughs> uh, speaking of football, though, did you guys watch the new the new league start? I only caught the fourth quarter of who was it? Memphis and Birmingham, I think, is who played. Well, it's Saturday night. Yeah, no, it was Sunday night. Sunday was, I thought, Arizona and I think Salt Lake City. But there was a, I thought there, hell, but I can't remember. Anyway, it was, I liked it. I mean, there's some differences with it. I liked some of the um, the way they did the instant replay, how transparent it was. And you saw the guy make a decision. And it's like, wait a second. This guy made a decision in 15 seconds. What the hell are yeah. the NFL guys doing? You know? 
like he's out getting a hot dog off the buffet line. I'll be right back. <laughs> I, I really uh, like the technology and like the rules and stuff, but man, yeah. the talent level just yeah, it's something else. The level wasn't I thought the level was like a step or two down. I would give like an eight. Trent yeah, Richardson just ran over everybody, Rod. Dude. Yeah, the, the quarterback, I the, co- the quarterbacking is is just. I mean, the quarterback in the NFL, outside of like maybe a handful of quarterbacks, are usually <laughs> gross. In this league, it was yeah, it was just it was really really bad to watch. Like people missing wide open passes and stuff. It was like, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, all right. But so you guys yeah. must you guys must have watched the Sunday game, that because Saturday game they were snagging stuff. Oh, maybe they were snag. Maybe they're snagging stuff. Still, the quarterbacks. I don't know. The thing. The thing is, is I feel like it'll take them time to get some talent because I think a lot of a lot of players are apprehensive to jump in there, knowing that like if you go to that league, like you're you're not in the NFL anymore, and you're kind of in that league, and you'll have to play extremely well probably to get back to the NFL. So they need to get a, a bit more talent. But if they do, I mean, I, I like it, I, and it's unfortunate I think for the XFL now, right? Because they're they already got a year jump on them. Yeah. And I don't know what the XFL could do at this point. Like, I mean, unless they do some crazy radical stuff, and they already did that back in the early 2000s. <laughs> that didn't work. could happen. That could happen. He hate me. Yeah. <laughs> he hate me was the best thing that came out of that, by far. Fantastic. What, uh, what channel are they showing those on? I watched it Saturday on, like, one of the main network channels. Sunday they put on the NFL network. Okay. I thought they were on CBS, too, on Sunday. Uh, listen, it's Saturday, I know I watched it like on CBS or one of the channels, Fox or somebody, but Sunday night, the the Salt Lake and Arizona game was on um, NFL Network. Mm. So you guys must have watched the other game that was on the other channel. It's interesting that they're putting that on NFL Network. Well, they... It's basically like a developmental league, I think, for the NFL. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're starting to look at it like that. I, I read a couple things over the past week where, like, NFL hasn't fully committed, but they're thinking about it because they could use a development league, which they, they do need one. Like, if you're yeah. not in the NFL, it's, they don't have a true – like, where the team could keep an eye on the player, maybe, you know, say, hey, try to get them these kind of reps, whatever, and that would be the perfect for them. But I, do they want to be a developmental league for the NFL is the question. Well, just yeah. look at it this way. Kids that don't want to go to college wouldn't be forced to go to college. Yeah. They could jump. They could jump right to that league. Like they had like the uh, mm-hmm. the quarterback at Clemson. He has the same agent as Tom Brady, and the agent's been lobbying for him to do the the AFA AFL AAF whatever league. So <laughs> whatever acronym doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. No, no. <laughs> I so did I mean, see, I did see they were after uh, one of the teams was after uh, Colin Kaepernick, and he was wanting like twenty million dollars to go play, which he should. Yeah. That would be huge for them. <laughs> That yeah. would be huge for the league. Well, the way they have it set up, what I like too, is their payment plan. So all the players come in at the same salary, but they actually have incentives on how, on how well they play. They can actually make more hitting bonuses here than they can in the NFL for a lot of the players um, yeah. in the way it's set up. So that's like the game I watched um, Saturday night. They were going against Mike Marks' team because Mike Marks is coaching one of the teams that's supposed to be the mm-hmm. favorite. Guess what? There was, it was no greatest show of turf the first weekend out. His team was getting pummeled. The defense had like six sacks against them, had like three interceptions. But they're getting all these bonuses. Like the receivers are making some great catches because they get incentivized to go out and do that. So the more receiving yards they get, the more it helps them build up more money. Um, but it had that one nasty hit that set the tone early on. I don't know if you guys saw that. I know I put it on my Facebook page as well when that linebacker just slammed the quarterback. And, and his helmet NFL, went flying, didn't it? Yeah, the NFL would have flagged that. <laughs> the NFL would have flagged them or something. And they're letting them play. They, they had hits like that all during the game, which is pretty sweet. Hmm. I uh, I haven't heard Mike Martz's name in about I don't know fifteen years. That was interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when we said Mike Martz, I was like, wait, that Mike Martz? Okay. <laughs> At one point, someone should have got him a longer shirt. I'll tell you that he should be reaching up for anything. It's too, too small the shirt. <laughs> oh, too small. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh. I, I can imagine it. And I don't want to. <laughs> like, where's that shade come from? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Bridge. Um, People have to know their limits. That's all I'm saying. Know your limits. Yep. Uh oh. Uh oh. Are you teasing us right now? Is that what you're doing, Tom? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. It's <laughs> only a day oh, away. That, that is that is the one that I'm looking forward to the most because you always say they sell out, right? The fresh fruit is usually mm-hmm. the first ones to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
So we'll let Todd pick, but one of our shows, we're going to all do a 450 North, whatever one Todd chooses. Yeah. yeah so but Todd, you better let me know quick because tomorrow it gets here. <laughs> yeah. so, so Eric Gilbert can just check out. He's not a huge fan of, you know, adjunct New England style and pastry stouts and fruited sours. So just before I warned Eric, we're going to drink one. Yeah. It's going to be like 20 minutes of a show. It's going to be great. <laughs> so this, this one is a uh, fresh fruit milkshake IPA infused with peaches and vanilla. 6.4 ABV. Nice. Is that the one you want us to do, Todd? Um, it doesn't matter. Well, he's drinking it now. Yeah, he's drinking it now. It doesn't. It, we no. should. Oh, we'll probably oh do, uh, sorry. sorry. He's got, no, he's got more. He's got more probably. Yeah, we picked up uh, two four packs of everything, but the uh, uh, the triple IPA and the uh, golden nuggets times two. So those so, ones are out then. Those two will be out. Yeah, right. so I've got a, I've got all the uh, fresh fruits and or I got an extra fresh extra fresh fruits and, uh, and then of course all the Berliner Weissens we got extras because she wanted to buy more of those. So Shannon's on a roll. She is just yeah, getting she all the She is. <laughs> she spearheaded this entire thing. She's like, we should go there and then get everybody some beer. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. That's like a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she is great because it's like she's learned about craft beer and stuff, and she's like energized about it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was a good. Uh, it was a good day. We sat, went to the brewery, and had a couple appetizers, and got two flights. Shared two flights. Of, of course, they had everything on tap that they had released that day. Plus, they had you know, I think they usually have about uh, I don't know uh, twenty taps, I guess, going at any given time. Yeah, nice. oh, fucking hammer. And Beyond it's most. Least- and it's mostly their stuff, so. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and then right. and, and we'll comment you and hit Joe before we hit the stories and stuff. All right. Uh, two ten ninety Broom says cheap. We'll allow it because they have a great channel and they're cool dudes. But he says cheap plug to hopefully see some of you guys. We are live streaming our brew day this Saturday morning, starting at nine a.m. Come hang out with us if you can. They're doing a single hop Amarillo hazy IPA. Nice. Um, we have. Sexton Brewing, Ashley says, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the TV ver- uh, viewership as the weeks go on for the football league, which I agree. It will be it will be interesting to see if more uh, people catch on or not. Mm-hmm. Um, Thrash Metal is going to join uh, join the, the, the live stream after work, 2 p.m. if you can. Um, they, 21090 says they have brewed nothing but dark beer since October, so they're ready for a juicy one. Nice. Uh, Eclipse Brewing showed up, said good evening all, and saying hi hey, to everybody. Hey, thanks to you. What's yeah. going on, brother? Uh, uh, Richie Z says, have you gents tried the Goose Island Bourbon County Barrel Aged Stout? It's the only beer I've left in the fridge, so I'm pouring it. Oh, boy. You have some uh, you, have, you have some differing opinions here between <laughs> everyone here um, to an extent. I love it. I think Bourbon County is awesome. Yes, they're owned by Avian Bev, whatever, but it's, I think it's a great beer. Is it a bit overhyped? Uh, nowadays, yes. When it came out, you know, 10 plus years ago. No, it was like one of the, you know, first on the market that whatever. But nowadays, yeah, there's a lot that have caught up, but it's still great beer, I think. I, I kind of agree with Joel a little bit on that, but I think that Uncle Jacob Stout by Avery's surpassed it. But that's just personal opinion, obviously. I'm sure you have an opinion, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> We're mindless sheep. We just agree with everyone else. <laughs> But I definitely think it's a little overhyped for what I think it's a little I think I don't think it's I should say it's a little overhyped. I think it depends on what year it is. When I had it, I didn't get to 2018 one this year because 2017 I thought it was a little overhyped. A couple years before that, I thought that one was fine. Um it was pretty good, which I really liked. So it just depends on the year. Um it's just not something I get crazy to go after. I'm not one of those guys to hunt it down like a lot of people do. I mean walk into our Kroger and it'll be there. You know, it was there for the first day at least. They even got some of the variants this year, but they were already gone by the time I got there. So there's just so many beers out there that it's kind of like, okay, I didn't get that one. I'll get this one. I didn't get that one. I'll get this one. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and I totally agree. I mean, that's the thing is like nowadays we are in a uh, renaissance of craft beer where like, <laughs> You know, 6,000 plus breweries you have, you know, everybody's local brewery brewing a barrel aged stout, a great IPA, great this, great that. So it loses its luster a little bit is the way I look at it. And speaking yeah, of that, I'm sorry, go ahead, Doc. I was going to say, I think it's that's pretty solid beer. I, yeah, I'm one of those guys that from time to time will go seek it out. I did in 2017, got the variants this past year for 18. I did not, but I heard uh, 
from what I'm hearing, the standard of it for 18 is is phenomenal this year. Better than like, or for 2018, better than three or four years past even of the regular. So I don't know. They're gonna have it on tap Saturday, so I'm gonna seek it out and, and try yeah. it and see. <laughs> You'll be there. Yeah. Speaking of overhyped beers, it's like right now I can walk into my Kroger and we've got like. I don't know, like 30 cases of hop slam that are just sitting there. Oh, know, man. It's like, it's like all of our stores about Cincinnati are like, people aren't picking it up. It's like, die more. You know, Dude, I remember when, six pack. I remember when hot, hop slam showed up here in Western Europe because we didn't get bells until about 2014 or 15. Mm -hmm. And I remember when they first came into the market, it was, it was early in the year. It was like, it was probably late January, early February. So hop slam just been released recently. I remember you would go, people would go to every store and just be like, where's the hub stuff? I'll buy a case, blah, blah, blah. When they would show up, they'd be gone in a couple hours. People were going nuts. Didn't matter if it was yep. 20 bucks a six pack, right? Fast forward, it's everywhere. It's not moving. It's, it's just unreal to see the difference in like three or four years. It's Well, I think it's that, but aren't they, aren't they also producing more of it now though? Also? Yeah, they have, yeah. they've up their <clears throat> they've up their production time. Yeah, so you get kind of like the founders, you know, Backwoods Bastard and some of the KBS. Yeah, KBS, yeah. It just sits around a little bit more now because it's not the, uh, you know, sought, yeah. as, maybe not as sought after, but also the there's more out there, so everybody's not rushing to get it as soon as it comes out. And you have to look, like I said, you go back five years and you can count on like one hand probably the amount of even regional breweries that are putting out crazy barrel aged stouts and putting them into like 10, 15, 20 different States. Now that's commonplace in 2013, 14, even that's not a long time ago. You know, you're talking five, six years, right? You could not find that. Like if when KBS would show up, it'd be gone. You either had to wait in line or you had to get there within a couple hours after it's released or it was gone. Now it sits in a lot of places all year round. It's just hanging out on shelves and stuff. And, it, and it's the same for CBS. It was going off the shelves like crazy until this last release. And hell, X still going to the bottle shops yeah, we, now and, and still found it. Yeah, I've my store over here, they got like the cool, like they have a bunch in there. So, And it's not always the quality of the beer either because you'll, you'll hear it. You'll get a lot of people be like, oh, this beer is not the same as it was. And in some cases, maybe it isn't. In other cases, it's just your palate's not the same and all the stuff you've been drinking around you and that you've been, you know, uh, New England style IPAs. If, you, if you're crazy into New England style IPAs or big double and triple IPAs now and you go and revisit a hop slam. Yeah, I mean, I could see how you wouldn't think it's the same. Like totally, yeah. your palate has probably changed immensely. So, Well, that's the one thing, like you mentioned there, like I did a beer tasting at the uh, day job and talked about how your, your taste buds, the average person has 10,000 taste buds. But as you get older, they actually decrease out. So you're losing some of those tastings. So things may taste differently than they actually are because you don't have as many taste buds involved now. So that comes into play there. And any other comments you want to hit for a? Uh... Yeah, yeah. There's probably still quite a bit actually. Let me just. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um... Hit the comments, son. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so two ten ninety brewing says they're gonna because I think Eric mentioned that they did all of the Bourbon County and most of the variants this year, and they said they're gonna do all of them again uh, in November, and they're gonna have them early. So that's cool. I, I really like that series as well. So I'm invite me, invite me. <laughs> <laughs> um, connected. Eric Gilbert says now that my hands are clean. It's 40 Creek sauce on the wings, not the whiskey. Geez, Joe, where's the other half now? A, that's on you for saying 40 Creek and garlic parm wings because I just assume you love your whiskey and your bourbon and everything. So you're drinking 40 Creek, I thought. Number two, the other half is in the fridge right now. Number three, we're moving on. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, 210 Bree says price is way too high, but it's amazing, especially some of the variants. This year's vanilla and orange were world class. Uh, I I, I I have all three, so I'm I'm definitely gonna check them out at some point. I might do like a theme week on my channel. I don't know. I, I just, those are big beers. I have to share them instead. Um, he also, or Richie Z says, I have the current one. I randomly picked it up when I bought some whiskey. And then he also randomly asked, Do you have any favorite pumpkin ales? Well, for me, my uh, pumpkin ales that I have, the top ones I have are usually Warlock, mm. the uh, the Avery pumpkin. KY in or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have Dogfish Head Pumpkin Ale. I like that one as well. And I like and I like Pumpkin too for Southern Tears. So 
those are kind of like the top ones that I usually have right around the pumpkin area. Yeah, a lesion is usually everywhere. Their night owl is probably one of the best. Just, good, yeah. just plain pumpkin ale, no crazy stuff going on. Just here's our pumpkin ale. That's that's probably one of my favorite regular ones. P pumpkin ale, you said from Dogfish Head, I, I always enjoy too. Um, uh, Steven's Point Whole Hog was really good. I had that one this year for the first time, and that was really good as well. Anybody else? No? We all hate pumpkin owls? Eric had pumpkin beers this year. You got a favorite? I like the uh, the Rum King. It's actually what I like. You know, the Rum King version of the Pumpkin. King. Mm -hmm. Eric's been big on the rum and beer lately. He's really yeah. much more of those rum beers. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's going to love coconut beers. Watch out! No, 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 no. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hey, the, that, the, last really one, the last one, Joe, I did just for you because I know how you kind of like to give me crap about uh, coconut beers. I don't ever give you crap. I, just, <laughs> I don't know how someone can like coconut. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Richie Z says he, he paid 11 bucks for his, so it wasn't cheap, but he'll drink this one slowly and chase it with sips of his bourbon. That's the way to do it. 11 for uh, Bourbon County, I mean, well, I would think now for this year's probably, I thought it'd be down like nine ninety nine or something, but it depends on where you're at. Yeah, it ranges anywhere from ten to like fifteen bucks, depending on if there's places that want to mark it up or not. You know, I'm sure there's some places that are like twenty dollars because they're gouging beyond belief, right? Yeah. Um, Cody Stark shows up and says, "Hey guys, I'm here. Uh, girlfriend and I just returned from Frankenmuth Brewery. They had Good deals. For, they had deals for Valentine's Day, and she found beer she liked with a big smiley face. So he must be. So which nice. one does she like? Which one does she like, Cody? Because they got some good beers there. Uh, wh where are they out of? Michigan. Frankenmuth, Michigan. Michigan. Oh, nice. Sweet. Yeah, we'll see what he hits us back with. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, I don't get the Kentucky Bastard anymore, which from, is from a brewery in Ontario called Nickelbrook. Uh, although, yeah, you guys might actually see Nickelbrook stuff on your shelf, especially in Ohio. He says, I tend to get bored of the same thing. Brown Out Your Dead is the new thing, or Muddy York's Cask Aged Barley Wine. That sounds interesting. Cask Aged Barley Wine. Uh, Eric, of course, says, I still like Miller Lite. LOL. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> we know that. We know this, Eric. Uh, and then Richie Z says, "What are you some some of your, uh, your recommended porters?" And Eric takes uh, one from I think all, we we would all agree, and that's Edmund Fitzgerald from Great. That was just thinking there, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm big into like regular porters. Founders Porter is awesome. The Great Lakes, Edmund Fitzgerald, uh, Black Butte from Deschutes is a great regular oh, flavor. Uh, I need you to settle down right now, Eric. Also, <laughs> simmer down, oh, simmer down. Smutty Nose. Is that an issue with Black Butte? <laughs> Smutty Nose from Lost Porter is another great one. I, I, I don't know how far Smutty Nose, Smutty Nose gets distribution. What, what's, your, what's your issue with uh, the Black Butte there? What, do, do a side by side. Next video, side by side. Emma Fitzgerald, Black Butte, Founders Porter, go. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, I was just kidding, but I'm into Challenge it. Challenge accepted. <laughs> but the only thing you were running into with the porter is kind of like, well, what kind of porter are you looking at as well, right? So, because if you get into the vanilla porter, like Breckenridge has their vanilla porter, which is a good one. If you're getting into peanut butter or something crazy, you got Sweet Baby Jesus, yeah. which is a pretty good porter as well. <laughs> Do you uh, want a classic anchor porter? Probably. But I was, yeah, <laughs> but Edmund Fitzgerald's up there, and of course, Victory at Sea. Yeah, but that's an Irish imperial Irish. porter with coffee and vanilla, Roger. Does it, does it say porter in the title? It says porter in the title. I <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Well, that's the thing we'd have to ask Richie too. Is he looking for like a regular porter, like you said, like some kind of flavored porter? Because yeah. there's there's so many now that like if I just look at regular classic ones, the ones we mentioned, but like yeah, there there are some really classic, just extremely tasty porters out there that I that we probably all should revisit at some point. And we probably haven't had a lot of those beers we just mentioned in quite a while. I mean, yeah. I can't tell you the last time I had Edmund Fitzgerald, it has to be like two or three years at the very least, but it's amazing beer. The now, Victor, I, I would have Michigan has a nice vanilla top of porter too. Yeah. Yeah, that is. The, actually the uh, peanut butter, uh, what is it? The victory C peanut butter. Yeah. Porter? Yeah. Oh, bro. I just did a video on that one. They, I got have, peanut, they, they got a peanut butter cup, but I haven't had that yet. Oh, I have that beer in the fridge, not the cup, but the regular one. I'm doing a head, a head, a head with the regular versus the peanut butter one in a live video in the next couple of weeks, I think so. Hey, you know, that peanut butter one is tasty. I can't wait. wait. Here's a spoiler head to head, no one loses. No That's one right. Loses. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wins. We all win at that point. It's like, Oprah, you win, and you win, and you win. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I actually had that peanut butter one at the uh, beer fest that in Cincinnati last year, Rod. That's the yeah. first time I had that one. You know what's an under underrated one from them? For the peppermint one. I thought I was gonna hate it like immensely, and I drank it. And I'm like, 
this is actually pretty fucking tasty. I was so surprised that like it was it was so subtly done, the peppermint on it, that it wasn't. I thought it was going to be like taking a drink of like the regular porter after brushing your teeth. That's what I thought was going to happen. And it wasn't. So if anyone sees the peppermint out there and you like peppermint or mint flavors, try it. Yeah. I've never seen that one. Yeah, it was really good. They have a coconut one too that I should have bought and I didn't. And it's all my fault. Yeah, that's on you, Joe. No, it's totally on me. I should have sent one and <laughs> should have sent it as a mystery beer to Eric, right? Eric? <laughs> All right. Um, what do you, what do you yeah, got? so that that should be the one we should do uh, live is the pina colada slushy for Eric. So we can walk Eric through. Oh man, no, let's not torture. Walk me through. No, honestly, <laughs> get him more comfortable with coconut. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, let's not torture Eric. Let's let us let us leave him alone with the coconut. Just no, I, honestly, the coconut now one is a little disappointing. It's it's more like pineapple juice. Now I'm there. pissed. Now I'm not happy. About it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kyle's trying to trick Eric and he's liking it. Yeah, I think he is. He's trying to set him up with failure and disappointment, which is fine. Oh, only time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, uh, head, co head coach, oh, this is good. He says, I love Eric, but he's absolutely delusional about those Lions. And I've actually been happy to see the Lions win. Eric Gilbert follows up with, Lions suck. <laughs> and hey, then Bill, he laughs at his comment. And sorry, Eric, I just had to read those. Was good. Bill Belichick appreciated the lies. So the yeah, Bill so take rams. that and suck it. Uh, no one wants to talk about Bill Belichick, do we? Ever? Nobody no. ever really does. It just no. happens. No, yeah, I just, so like nobody lets athletes foot, but it happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good analogy, right? That's, yeah. I mean, that's Bill good, Belichick, <laughs> athletes feet. Yeah, that's a big stream, but I'm into it. Um, <laughs> Cody, Cody starts with like, cashmere IPA was her favorite, um, which is interesting. I don't know if you guys have had any any beer with cashmere hops, but they produce a Eric 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 Lee for a second coconut. They, they coconut flavor in it. Uh, earmuffs, earmuffs, Eric. Uh, no, but, I'm going on mute. <laughs> yeah, you know, the cashmere had uh, the first time I had it. I had the Voodoo Brewing Company and, and PA, and they uh had, they had a distinct coconut flavor, and I got it a couple other times out of there. So I'd be interested to see if she picked up on that, Cody. Uh, he said he liked the Neil House, uh, and uh, Eric Gilbert Opaco. Okay, that's great. Uh, Richie's he says regular <laughs> porters, but a peanut butter porter sounds delicious, and he does love the Founders Porter. Um, Oh, man. Head coach says, Rogers compared a BMW to a Chevy with the Porter remark. Victory at sea is absolutely top notch. That's one way to look at it and probably the correct way to look at it. <laughs> he said that uh, Cody said the service was great at the uh, Frankenmuth Brewery. Uh, yeah. and picked up a growler of casual loop IPA from Oracle for tonight. And then our last comment is head coach says, went to Bow's Point last July. Awesome. Doesn't even begin to describe it. Nice. Yeah. I would love to check them out if I get out to that San Diego area. Yep. Yeah. And then the last comment, and, and, and I totally agree with Richie on this one. He goes, I used to just watch Lions games when they were on TV just to watch Barry Sanders because he's a 49ers fan. I think, I think most people appreciated his talent. Like when he retired, I was fucking furious. I'm like, you are a beast still. You're like 30. You're dominating everyone. I'm like, just break records, please. Like, just make it entertaining. Uh, that, was, that was very fortunate that he retired, but I don't, I don't blame him. Like with those Thanksgivings, like, well, who's playing? I don't know, Barry Sanders and those other guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like, are we going to see the crazy? <laughs> oh, my God. Scott Mitchell was such a fucking travesty. And then when he went to, what is it, my, we came from Miami, right? When you guys signed him, oh, my God. They were like, oh, he had one good year. He had like four good starts. Let's sign him to this huge deal. Then he was Scott Mitchell again. <laughs> What happened to the other guy? Oh, he was yeah. just visited. <laughs> you, ever, you ever see anybody have a four-game like hot streak? Yeah, that was Scott Mitchell. He parlayed that into like $20 million or whatever the game. Thanks, yeah. Russ Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> it still stings. It still stings. <laughs> I don't know. If Russ Thomas was the GM back then. But anyway. yeah. <laughs> Bobby Ross there. was the coach, wasn't he? What's that? Or was it Wayne Fonts or was it Bobby Ross? Who was the coach back then? Uh, I remember Fonts. Could have been Bobby Sanders. Ross. I thought it was Bob because then he retired. I don't coach Ross. my players. Well Sanders, was, well, Sanders was still there with, with Ross. Yeah, he was because he yeah. wasn't the part of the reason he left was because all the losing and he didn't like Ross on top of that. Was not that what it is? Yeah. yeah. I would have been like, hey, let Bobby Ross get the fuck out. <laughs> Keep him buried. Three years left. No, my than... philosophy is that Sanders. They say is like someone that was into it, but I think Sanders actually retired early. One, he was young. He would retire, be able to walk away. But two. He was retired because within he was within a few seasons of catching the record. There always yeah. be the question: 
what if Barry would have kept playing? He'll always be tied to that. Like, what if Barry kept playing? So yeah, yeah that's, Oh, that's... Emma Smith even comments on heels, dude. If he would have been in, the, if he would have played, no one would have been able to touch him. Yeah, no, he was. Well, people say Emma Smith was like the best one because he had the rank. Like, dude, Emma Smith was running behind Mack trucks his whole career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, there, if you go back at some of the some of the some of the old replays and just games, it's like. His hole is like an entire house, like the size of a house. It's like he just like step, he could jog through if he wants. Barry Sanders has eight people trying to tackle him, and he still gets like four yards. Yeah. It's embarrassing to. I could I could have broke records behind that yeah. Dallas line. Yeah. Well, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm mean, I <laughs> God. <laughs> I don't know about that, Tom. Like, oh, no, I mean, was like, I'm just I mean, saying. I'm just saying. Emmett had talent. He definitely he had was. talent. He's definitely a Hall of Famer. I'm just saying. No not, not Barry, though. You put him on the Lions lines, I don't think he's getting close like Barry Sanders is. No. No. Not at all. You put Barry on that Dallas line? I'm oh, my God. God. He's like 2,000 yards <laughs> every year, every single year. He's been playing three seasons. He's already beaten Jim Brown. Actually, <laughs> Barry, Barry probably wouldn't know what to do with himself with all those holes. He'd be like, wait, where's where, what? Yeah. I have to just run without being touched? What is this? Yeah. I mean, that was just all-star line for so much of Emma's career. Yeah. And then uh, Eric Gilbert says, Seahawks suck, son. I never claimed they didn't, but at least uh, even though – Never mind, never mind, Eric. I won't, I won't, I won't go down to your level, Eric Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let Eric pull you down. Don't I won't do it. it. I won't do it at all. Uh, um, but uh, we, uh, actually, Saxon says he's a Giants fan. I need sympathy. Our condolences. At least you have OJ or uh, OBJ, but for how long? Um, we also have uh, oh, Beer Man says, "Wow, cashmere hops, tropical coconut, peach, and tangerine fill out the aroma." While similar flavor profile paired coconut, melon, tangerine, and lemongrass sounds delicious. Yeah, I'm not – my palate's not that terrible. It's pretty fucking horrible, but not that horrible. Yeah, definitely got – when I first had it, I had no – I never heard of a hop. I was just like, what the hell the cashmere palate? So I tried it, and I was like, well, there's coconut. Are they sure they didn't add coconut here? And sure enough, I looked it up, and I was like, yeah, coconut. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. So – and then there's another hop uh, that they just came out with. It's uh, from the Pacific Northwest called Sabro. Uh, there's – Brewery starting to use it, and it gives you pina colada vibes. I had it and just reviewed a beer from Six Point called Dabble. It had that, Cashmere, and Idaho 7, definite pina colada vibes. It was insane. Huh. Nice. So keep your eye on any Sabro or Cashmere hops if you want to try to go for, like, pina colada-ish without actual, you know, fruit in it. Eric's going to run right out and grab some. Yeah, Eric's going to see Sabro and be like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to see ya. <laughs> And uh, that's pretty much all we have. We have a conversation between uh, Elbow88 says cheers from Florida. He showed up. What's cheers, up? Cheers, Elbow. What's cheers. going on? I actually started to work through a little more to secure our city beers up here since they're now available. So. Yeah, that's cool. I, I didn't know this, but somebody said, um, and I don't know if this is correct, so we'll just go with hearsay. I don't check facts. There's no reason to. Uh, but <laughs> Fake news. Apparently, uh, a lot of the stuff that we're getting from Cigar City is apparently brewed at Oscar Blues's uh, location. Is it in? Are they in North Carolina too? I believe in North Carolina, yeah, yeah. Asheville, yeah. I believe. Because, because remember, a couple years ago, they they bought Cigar City and they joined up with like I think it was like Perrin Brewing in in Michigan, and they oh, have like a big conglomerate going on. Apparently, Cigar City stuff that we're getting in the Northeast and in the Midwest is I'm pretty sure from the Oscar Blues. Brewery, their their contract brew. Well, I don't know. I I can't. I don't know if you would say they're contract brewing it because they kind of own them now. So I, they're just brewing it there. Like, can we use your equipment? <laughs> that, yeah. Sure, come on in. Yeah, <laughs> here's a tank for you. That's I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Uh, coming up here in March, we're gonna start getting toppling Goliath. Yeah, so, you're gonna start signing it. Yeah. Is that was yeah. that what I hear? I will. <laughs> you know, I will. Toppling. <laughs> there we go. Don't don't worry, they suck now, according to some Eric, because you know everyone can hear uh, Todd, everyone can get them. So that's what I've heard. Yeah, that's yeah. what I've heard. That's not, no, not very good anymore. Yeah. What I can get, go down to my local store and buy them is shit now. <laughs> Just like Firestone, you can get them now, so they're not good. Yeah. All right. Any more comments you got there? Uh Richie Z asking about Malta to Montreal. Um, when you're gonna have uh, when are you having him on your live stream for some beer tasting? I don't know if he means you're you you on him. I know you've been on his before for whiskey. Yeah, I think he, I don't think he's been on here for a while. Except so when we did a hangout one time. But yeah, I need to actually catch up with Swami. I haven't been on there for a bit. But yeah. And, and then um, Eric Gilbert says Saber sucks, son. 
they do. But so do your Leafs. Eric so we're, he's we're in the same hate. boat. He's throwing a lot of hate out tonight. Eric Gilbert has hate in his heart. He's, like, he's sometimes positive, mostly just an asshole. Yeah. I love you, Eric. It's Valentine's Day. He shouldn't be hating. I know. But I like he, it. <laughs> we, got, we, got great act, we got great activity tonight. You say in the description box of this is so let's spread some love while drinking some beer. I guess Eric's going to get the memo. Yeah. Get a fan for it. And one last thing Redbeard shows up and says, What be going down? Cheers, Redbeard. What's News. up, Redbeard? What yeah. be going people of the world? <laughs> yeah. Redbeard taking a break from getting his ass beat in Apex, I guess. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, he at least admits to it because the hey, I know like, he did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> me and me and Todd have won me and Todd have won already on Apex Legends. So And don't feel yeah. bad, Redbeard, because I yeah. totally blow at the game. Todd so. was along for the ride, but he's getting lost. But he was I like, can't to kill anybody, so I, I suck. <laughs> We're like, Todd, stand there, distract him. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like the de 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 decoy for everybody. Apex Legends is pretty addictive now. It's pretty I, fun. I mean, it's a fun I, game. Yeah, yeah um, Dan just found out about it. Booze reviews. He just found out about it the other day from Red Beard. So now he's playing it too. So he actually played with Red Beard. I think on a on, the, on a team the to yesterday. I believe last night. I'm pretty sure. So it has cross platform then because I know he's played on a PS4. So Red yeah, Beard's like a computer. Might have been PC. He was maybe he was on the PC as well. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. What, I, I don't know. What's Redbeard, Redbeard playing it on? I Red? thought I thought the PC, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought he's using on computer. I know Dan's using on okay. PS4. Okay. Which they're making more games to go cross platform on these things. So. I wonder if yeah, if you can do PC to Xbox. I think that would make yeah. sense. That is way overdue. Way yeah, he, overdue. he says yeah. no cross platform. So did you play with him on PC, Redbeard? He also says he's fully aware of his suckage, which we all <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're talking about Apex Legends. Oh, I just no, no, Rod would tell you if you play with me, you'd look like an ace for Todd sure. Says. Todd's like, where are you at? I'm like, I'm right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, he's like, oh, there you are. All right. <laughs> beer man says he's got to get going. Have a good night. Great show, everyone. Take it easy, man. Cheers, Beer man. Thanks for swinging yeah, by beer, and checking man. everything out. And then um, what I was going to say. So make sure, you know, you guys are on the chat. Great activity tonight. Make sure you're checking out a lot of good channels in the chat there, too. But also uh, Joe, the Beer Patrol with Eric, Eric Lyons fan. You, I don't know, Joe, if you typed anything out there, but you can hit the dots next to their names. Also check out their videos. And then also in the chat, you know, Red Beer's here. He has his channel out there. We also have um, Broken One that has a channel too. So check out some of the people here 21090 Bruin, uh, Thrash Metal Eclipse. A lot of good guys here doing a lot of good beer stuff, which is the fun thing about the whole beer community. All the different things happening. What'd you say? Uh, Chris from Off the Tenth is, is yeah, right? Off the Tenth, and also GS GSHL TV. Although they used to start going about midnight to like what six in the morning, those guys go crazy. Yeah, and yeah. and exclusive Ashley Saxon at Saxon Bruin is starting his channel soon. So I, I'm gonna actually saw. I don't think I actually subbed him, so I think I feel like I should sub him. I'm gonna like, buy into it till I actually see something on video, though. Maybe he's setting us up. You know, if you little Lucy with the football there. No, I am subscribed to him. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I must have. I must have ring, ring the bell for when something happens, right? Yeah, that's true. You know, that's a good idea, except for sorry, Ashley. Until you have any content, no bell ringing. <laughs> and then, of course, if you guys like what you're watching tonight, make sure you hit that like button. Of course, if you haven't subscribed here yet, make sure you subscribe. So, taking a look at some of the stuff from the beer world this week, um, where do I begin? Because I go to the big board. Pick one and go what with it, brother. Big, one of the big things right now taking place, and there's actually an article on it. If you go to my Facebook page, Rajay Beer Ventures, or if you follow me on Twitter, I posted about it as well. Let's just start off with the Great Lakes Brewing News. And Joe, you might be familiar with this too, because I think the guy's out of Buffalo. And <laughs> well, shit doesn't go right. Shit just doesn't go right. So if you guys are familiar with it, you can check out those articles. I'm not going to go as deep into it, but essentially a writer for that, Great Lake. Let's just say it's not affiliated with Great Lake Brewing, so don't think it's anything to do with them. It's just Great Lake uh, Brewing News wrote this article. Supposed to be satire, he's saying now, but got into all these different overtones of uh, misogyny and almost like date rape type stuff. And it's like, I don't know where you go with it. I don't know what this guy was thinking. I have no idea. He's come out now. I guess he's kind of apologized for, it, but 
breweries are cutting ties or like Listerman Brewing here, which Todd, you're familiar with Listerman. They took the stack that they received from him and set them on fire on their Twitter page. So if you want to see I that. Saw that. Was, <laughs> yeah, so it's like people do not want to be tied to this dude. People are called from other breweries. Like, hey, we don't need your advertise. We're not going to advertise with you anymore. And it's a point. It's like at some point, when does it stop going from almost like a frat mentality for some of these guys in the beer world to, okay, this is a business that so we need to start treating it as such type thing. I don't know what your guys' thoughts were on it, but you guys, if you did read the piece or see anything on it, any feedback you have or anything you want to chime in on it. But I just thought it was kind of like, I think he was trying to do some type of expression, which, you know, you're supposed to have some leeway as kind of a writer, but at the same point, you have to be aware of your surroundings, which he seemed not to be seen to be tone deaf to the environment we're currently in. Well, one, it's it's really hard to do any kind of satire or anything like that when you're writing because everybody kind of reads it a different way. So it's always going to come off negative, in my opinion, for when you're trying to put it out there that way. It's just bad judgment on that guy's part. It was, it was, it was terrible. Yeah, I think if you might have put, like, in the beginning that this is a piece of satire or something like that where people identified it at, that might have helped him out because he even said, like, maybe you should have done it that way, but. Yeah, I, I don't know if that would have helped that much at all, though, honestly. Yeah, yeah. And he should have just not done it in general. I don't know where right. that publication right. is even meant for something like that. Like, it's, I don't know, like, it was it was stupid. And the fact that he didn't come out and, like, instantly apologize and, and state his case, it took him days. And all the advertisers in it just left. And like you mentioned, Rod, like, some of the first were here in the West New York area because the guy – Mm -hmm. I want to say he's an owner of a brewery here that uh, is like a small brewery mm -hmm. restaurant. And uh, yes, a lot of the local here, like Thin Man Brewing and Community Beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thin Man would lift the yeah, they well, ties, yeah. Well, Thin Man, the owner of Thin Man Brewery owns like a lot of craft beer bars around here, like like a half dozen. His name's Mike Schatzel. And yeah, they are instantly like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> like, we're totally just instantly <laughs> done. I don't want to hear any excuse or whatever. Why we're just not into it. So, you know, it's, I question why he even, thought that was a good idea in the first place i don't satire joking around whatever that's not i don't think the right place to do that and certainly in this day and age you need to know better at the story and applaud to those guys that are doing that and standing up like listerman that was burning the articles you know burning the stack of papers in the box and flipping them off as they're doing it. it's like you know good for them for standing up and and yeah not really you know for what was right or, or whatever the case like that just don't want to be associated with that which you yeah. know yeah, it was a it was a weird situation just to, to see that and think that and it's kind of like I don't know where it's going. It's kind of like you know I saw it. I was kind of in my mind thinking smoking the bandit, the, <laughs> the part when the kids get stopped by uh, Buford Justice. He tells them, "You may, <laughs> you may think it, but don't you?" <laughs> you know, it's kind of like somebody should have pulled him back and said, "You know, this is not a good idea." To put yeah. something like this out there. So I was going to do a video on it earlier. I said, oh, I'll just bring it up on the show when we do the show. But it's kind of like the environment's changing, and he didn't either. He's not aware of it, or he he just I don't know. His sense of humor was not on balance for everybody else. But he caught himself yeah. in a situation. It's 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 not like you were talking amongst friends and you happen to just you know say something off the cuff or whatever. It was an entire fucking article in your publication. Yeah. And how do you think people are going to respond to that? Like, how, how, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking at all. Like, in general, thinking that, like, no one's going to see that nowadays, how everything is. Like, everybody sees everything. So, I, I don't understand. I don't even understand where they were coming from with that. Like, they're, like what their end goal was. You know, you might get a couple chuckles out of people reading your publication. And then, and then, then what? I mean, it's yeah, makes no sense. Like, there's there was nothing positive that was going to come out of that. Yeah. And even now, like, another piece I saw, they were like, well, who was the editor of that? Relighted this to even go, you know, because he's some he doesn't run it the paper, he was writing it as a piece, and now the green editor is under fire for even allowing it to even hit out there. So, man, it's a, a stupid, super situation, should never happen. Yeah, anything you did you see any of that, Eric? Anything you got? There you go. But yeah, but if you guys see it out there, you read the piece, just know it's not affiliated with Great Lake Bruin as well. So I'm sure they were like, oh, great. Like, you <laughs> start getting some calls in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, when I first saw it, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, what? I was kind of confused at first. I was thinking, what is what is going on? Why is Lister well, the first thing I saw yeah, was the I'm video like, of Listerman Burn? I was like, 
What what happened? What did I miss? There was, actually, there was a beef with Great Lakes or something taking place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In my area, there because you guys, you know, being further down to the south, um, there's Great Lake Brewery in Toronto too. There's a Great Lake Brewery mm-hmm. in Toronto, and then there's Great Lakes Brewing Company in Cleveland. And the same thing. It was like people were like, "What? What do you mean?" I'm like, "Holy shit! There's multiple Great Lake Brewing Companies." And <laughs> it's like this is this is not gonna this is not gonna end well. But uh, yeah, it yeah. seems that it, it, very quickly though it. Uh, it was good to see the response from all the, well, you know, most of the uh, advertisers. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't take too long for people to respond back and all the breweries and everything. And it was kind of pretty much condemned there. So, yeah. so is that one of the, is that publication like when you have to be a subscriber to, or they just like ship them to breweries and they just kind of lay them out and you just pick it up as you're at the brewery and or whatnot. From the way it looked to me, they kind of ship them out to the different breweries, but the breweries pay to advertise in them too. Yeah. Okay. So like here we have like a newspaper called City Beat, which is like the local type city stuff, like not the regular newspaper. I think yeah. it was something like that, but more around beer. Um, I never picked it up anytime I've been a Listerman, but I mean, I guess they're out. They were out there, and you would grab one if you wanted to read something while you're drinking it or whatever. So. But not anymore. <laughs> it quickly saw a decline of who's taking what now. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but yeah, one of those things in there. And speaking of things that, um, and then I will comments after this other one. Speaking of things that are kind of boneheaded to do, we've we've touched on and around some of the different stuff of founders, and there's different things out there about them. So today on Twitter. I don't know whose idea it was or whatever, who came up with it, but apparently they put a tweet out talking about, or it might have been yesterday even on Twitter would have happened last night, but it talked about, hey, we're taking all your tweets, ask us anything you want, blah, blah, blah. Didn't start out well. Because <laughs> <laughs> and if you saw in my Twitter feed, you might have seen some of the comments on there. People pretty much went right after them about the whole situation they were having out there with the employee that was suing them and saying, you know, are employees still treating people so Certain ways are you still using the n-word are you still doing this and it's just went from one thing to another to another to another and it's like it's like the putting oj on the seat if you know there's a chance he's going to say the glove doesn't fit then don't ask him to try on the glove you know it's kind of a, one of those bonehead type decisions that it was like mm-hmm. why would you open yourself up to that and so all day long when i had a chance to take a look at it earlier they were just getting hit by people all over on that so i don't know if they're still running that out there or not but I don't, I don't get why they would put that out there. I mean, you know, I guess they thought people would just ask them, hey, what's coming out next? Or what's this coming out? But it still seems to be a hotbed. And apparently Founders has now hired a uh, diversity uh, chief or whatever they're calling them to try to do stuff for sensitivity training and all this stuff out there at the brewery. And then, of course, then people were saying, well, what's, what's this diversity person like? You know, what do they fit? What's, you know, basically asking, are they, you know, um, their background or their history and it's just like it's leading from one thing to another they don't get closed one door they open another door so founders is still a pretty hot topic especially i guess more around that area maybe up towards michigan because i know people that have went to the brewery and have had some issues i guess or they think they have said so it's just interesting so you may see some more of that stuff playing out there too but i don't know if you guys caught wind of any of that either but it was uh it was just an interesting thing it was kind of like you just asked to get slapped in the face. There. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like a, a Reddit yeah. ask me anything after you did yep. something not all yeah. that great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what what is the latest on all that? Have you heard anything? Um, anything more? No, the, only not, thing, the, only, the only thing they responded is saying, hey, we hired a diversity chief to deal with sensitivity training. And then people were like, what did you fire the people that, you know, pretty much um, said what they said to the other people there and they didn't respond to it and there was some other stuff. So it's still got some feelings out there, but it's just like, you know, people were liking and retweeting all kinds of comments. So it wasn't like it was, you know, going down easy for them on this whole thing. So I don't know why they, they at a point they have to release like a brewery corporate type statement and say something. Cause it's just like sitting out there for them. So, you know, people are still, you know, getting founders beers and if people get founders beers, they get founders beers, but there are a part of the population that's not buying them right now. So yeah but that was a that was an interesting thing but yeah. on the lighter i was like go ahead no i was just i don't know that's just stupid on their part yeah. I mean, 
Just wait until things, you know, after everything happens. Give it some time before you start doing things like that, okay? If you're not prepared to answer those questions, then you shouldn't be doing an open. I just see open. somebody in the back office like, who's the guy that told me to go kick us in the nuts? Well, well that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. That the, maybe the, the social media manager might not, I don't say they're not aware, but maybe they don't realize how big of an issue it is. And they're just like, oh, we'll just do this. And then someone's like, no, 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 can't, do not. Do not. Did someone tell your Roger about this? And Roger's like, I don't know what the fuck's happening. Yeah, like it could be just like they really didn't communicate. I mean, it could be just you know, I had no idea. Maybe yeah. not. I don't know. Yeah. In the end, I don't think it definitely went the way that it was. They were thinking it was going to go. Whoever put it out there, but you know, you got to communicate it at some point. So maybe it, it leads to them actually addressing it a little bit more. So. I heard. I heard communication that founders isn't the best. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I heard it isn't the best. Yeah. <laughs> you might want to bring in a director of communications as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you might want to help everybody out there and just <laughs> teach them how to, you know, have manners. We bring in Charles Barker. You guys are knuckleheads. Yeah, a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of knuckleheads. <laughs> everybody here is so terrible. Oh, I, I love You know why it's so bad? I'll tell you why it's so bad. You know why it's so bad? No. Charles, can you finish the sentence, please? <laughs> um, on a lighter note, and this is for Todd's benefit, Brew Dog is now coming to Indy as the next place outside of Ohio to put another brewery or brew pub. So they're going to start working on that. So Todd's really oh, nice. a couple hours from Indy, so you'll be getting it there as well. And guess what? It's still two hours from me. Two yeah. hours to Columbus, two hours to Indy. They're building all around me. Yeah, it's not even two hours for me, so that's yeah. even better. Let me ask this question. I don't, I don't want to be a dick here, but do we? But really, you're going to anyway. Yeah, do we really need <laughs> another brew dog like two hours away, or maybe four <laughs> hours away from the other? Call? Like, I don't know anybody. I don't see anybody in the Northeast or Midwest going, "Yo, I need all the brew dog, and I need it now." Like, <laughs> we're low. We're low on hops. Yeah. We need to run to Indy real quick. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I he's gonna hate. <laughs> hey, hey, I, and and I even review. I reviewed their Choco Libre, their Night Show. That was fucking delicious. But I don't. I like. I, it's Brew Dog. Like, they, yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah right. They, right. They, they went a little further. Maybe to Eric in Michigan, or they went further to yeah. Joe in New York, or something. Give a little bit of space, right? Even yeah. Nice, you know, but no, they're Go like, to the Indy. Go to the West Coast, go to the East Coast, go to the South, and not like two hours away or four hours away. Or where? How, what is, is is how far away is it from the Columbus specifically? So from Columbus to the border, um, well, you got to go down. Actually, you have to go down and over, right? Because I'm trying to think of my no, no, Indiana's right Col next door. So you're Columbus, Columbus, yeah, Columbus for me is about three and a half hours. So yeah. let's say it's four hours. Seriously, you don't need the brewery, another brewery or brew pub four and, hours away from the other one when they just and, showed up here. And I'm an hour 40, hour 45 minutes from Indy. So, yeah, you're five hours maybe, whatever, from yeah, Columbus yeah. to Indy. Yeah. But maybe not even that because from up there you can take like 70 and cut across. So it's probably still four or four and a half hours. Yeah, that makes no sense. <laughs> Columbus, <laughs> right. Columbus, Columbus to Indianapolis, two hours and 42 minutes. Yeah. Oh, it's only two hours and <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> hey, we can use that keg you got over there. Can you send it over? Straight, straight down I seventy or across. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it was even shorter than I thought. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. What? What is even happening? <laughs> they're is like, like, <laughs> like they're going to White Castle or something over here. You know, <laughs> spread them out. Spread them out. Spread them out. So. But I mean, it, it, the thing I look at is they just literally opened up, right? Like in the last year or whatever. And it's like some places aren't even getting like full distribution of their beer yet. And they're just like, yeah, we're going to open another one real quick. Like yeah, they, didn't, they didn't had a chance yeah. to assess how the one in Columbus is even going. So yeah. I don't know. They're, <laughs> they're moving quite quickly. I just a little bit too, too quick. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, oh, you want me to go to comments now or do you? Yeah, yeah. Hit comments now before we go to the next thing. Pick my All right. Break in there. Cody, man, this is the exclusive night. We have uh, Cody World Stark. World premiere, premiere. World premiere. World <laughs> premiere. DJ Khaled. All right. <laughs> Sorry, we'll start hot locking. Go ahead. <laughs> Cody, Cody Stark says, going to get my brewing equipment within the next couple of weeks. 
would love to op upload videos on the YouTube about the experience in the beer when I get going on the brewing. Oh, boy. Uh -oh. All the channels. All of them. Do it, Cody. Yeah, Cody. I'd be, I'd be curious to see how they go. Um, then he says, mm, Great Lakes Brewing. He's, uh, he likes Burning River Palo, which is which is a damn good beer. I've had that in a long time. Yeah, <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Yeah, like six years, maybe? He said it's been a long fucking time. I need to revisit that. <laughs> Um, he says, founder says, uh, kind of made some mistakes lately, it seems, like <laughs> some videos on YouTube about discrimination. Yeah, yeah Cody, they're, uh, they don't have the greatest reputation as we speak right now. Things are happening. <laughs> uh, uh, Cody Stark says, uh, but I like the idea of a 19.5 ounce solid gold beers. Did he mean yeah, because they got it in that can because they're kind of racking those up, I guess, against like the Lagunitas, uh, some Easy Ale, yeah. some of the other, the, uh, Sierra Nevada BFD, you know, it's a good idea mm -hmm. with them. For sure. Uh, he says the founders has the culture of their mouths, uh, mouths moving faster than their brains, LOL. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Which reminds me, the next marketing guy might be the guy from Great Lake Brewery News. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the editor's just going to move over there. He's the social media manager now. There you go. From one shit storm to another. Uh, he also says Nitro Cho uh, Choco Libre is great. Would you guys consider them more of a macro beer company at this point, even though they brew specialty beer? Just curious. I think the guys over in the UK consider them macro. Yeah. I'm talking I, to Craig and Harry and all of them. I think they consider them pretty big. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know if they are, are actually considered that by the industry, but I don't think like Sierra Nevada here. Yeah. Or maybe even they like Sam, Sam Adams. Adams or, Sam yeah. Adams. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I think they make some solid stuff. To be fair, though, like a lot of their offerings when they first showed up here like five years ago, I never got them fresh because they had to yeah. come from overseas and then import and go through fucking 17 different places. And you get them. It's like, oh, here's their IPA. Their punk Six IPA. It's like, yeah, it's like five and a half months old. And you're just like, oh, that's that's great. Like, wow, I can't tell you how good this is. So now that they're actually brewing it in Columbus. Um, it's cool, even though I haven't picked up the Punk IPA. I don't. I don't even. Yeah, I've seen it, uh, but I've been trying more of their specialty stuff. Right. I would say they're kind of like you know the bigger craft breweries. Like they're they're you know yeah. not quite macro, but they're super big at this point. Well, I would say let's also say like not all macro is necessarily a bad either. I mean, look no. at Todd at Wicked Weed earlier tonight, so he enjoyed that, and technically they would be considered macro because they fall under AB and Bev, but. I tell you right now, if I go to Baltimore, which I'm thinking about going in June later this year, I'm going to freaking Guinness. And I'm going to freaking yeah. get as many of those 64 beers on tap I can get. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> you mean all of them? Just all, of them. all of them. Ten I, flights, you're good to go. I just Uber. <laughs> I'm only Ubering to the hotel, so. <laughs> Yo, when in Rome, you know, you got you – Yeah, gotta, you so, get... just to, so I think that's one of the things, too, is, like, don't get so – enamored like in a craft beer world that you're like cutting off other ones that actually still make some good beers out there you know what i mean yeah. it's kind of like you know i still say like you know listening space dust is still a pretty damn tasty beer so it's kind of like oh, that mentioned the night owl earlier one of the best pumpkin beers owl, to this yeah. point like it's still great uh yeah i think that, a lot of those now that they're just they're not even doing anything with them you're just getting kind of the distro right. i mean here's here, here, let me ask you a question so. though let me ask you guys a question because i'm looking thinking about the founders thing in my head and you look at the founders thing and you compare it to like, okay, are we hypocrites a little bit? All right. So a couple of us have made a decision not to buy founder stuff or a lot of people have. Okay. Because of, because mm -hmm. of basically one incident that I guess, you know, there could be a couple, but it's pretty much one, but then we have no problems buying an AB InBev product, which they have been documented to do a lot worse stuff than what happened at founders, like a lot worse. Like talking wait, about now are we talking about like, the whole discrimination thing, or are we talking about just? I'm talking about being as a macro. Or... I'm talking about there, and there's even bad things that Heineken have done, like when Cloudwater yeah. in the UK, you know, ended up not wanting to do this stuff because Heineken and, and whatnot with Lagunitas and and then uh, Brewdog and all. They were talking. There was a lot of stuff that I read that about Heineken and some of the stuff they did, and I'm talking like re I, I don't even want to repeat some of the stuff. It was terrible. Right. So. For me, I'm almost feeling like I, at this point I'm a hypocrite because I okay, I if I if I say I'm not, wh what's the difference between founders and anybody under Heineken or under AB InBev? How do I separate? Them? And I don't, in my mind, I don't know what the, there really is no difference. It's just maybe founders hits closer to home because they're a, they're a craft brewery and I've loved them and whatnot. So like it's more disappointing. But like at the same time, 
if those bigger companies are doing stuff and they own all these other breweries that I have no problem spending money on, there, where, where's, where do I draw the line? Is the question that I'm having for myself now, but also how you guys feel about it. I think it's a matter of what you know and when you know it with breweries. Like I didn't know, I don't know much of anything about the Heineken type thing or some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. I know there was an incident that came out earlier last year um, about one of the other breweries. I think it was, um, it wasn't Atwater, it was another Michigan one type thing. If something happened, like an employee put something out on Instagram like that, and they immediately fired the guy. So yeah. it was kind of like, it's how they react to a lot of the stuff too. So if they keep people on and they're doing the same thing, then yeah, if you're doing one, not the other, I guess you would kind of fall into that thing. But it's a matter of when you find out certain things about companies and how they're doing stuff and how they're moving forward. Like there's some people that probably aren't drinking um, – Trillium, right? No, it was a Trillium or Treehouse had the incident last year. Trillium, it was Trillium. Right, so Trillium. some of the stuff, and then like pouring in like bourbon into the things, but also how they treated their employees. Mm -hmm. You know, they came back and rectified it, but there were people that were not going to drink them over that whole type of thing as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I guess the way I look at it is for me is like, I don't know, I, I it's weird that I'm singling out founders for my own personal thing when like I probably shop and buy food and 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 you know buy beer from breweries that probably do the same thing you know what i mean or have done the same thing in the past like i don't know how i feel about that if, if i should you know I, I don't know i just i it was just a i was just thinking about it in my head and i'm like yeah hmm. you know I, I don't know i don't know how to feel yeah i mean it's kind of weird for me because i actually knew some of the sales reps that i've met at the beer festivals and events that i've talked to online and email back and forth that have been founders employees as well so and they're good people that I've met with. I, I never mm -hmm. see anything along those. So you can't pretty much cast a whole thing, I guess, maybe a whole company based on the actions of a few. The thing that makes founders stand out is if it went all the way it did through HR, the management, and everything, they still didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. That's an issue in itself. You know, if you have a rogue employee that mm -hmm. does something, you handle that. But once management and HR is involved and they still do nothing, I think for me that casts them out in a different light. I could I could see that. It's kind of like an accepted to, uh, tolerance for it, and so. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, people have to make their own decisions and how they want to handle it. I just bought a whole case of Blushing Monk. Did I mention that? <laughs> <laughs> was it a, was it a Rod J deal? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Um, I mean, you, you don't. If you know, you don't know. You it, it, again, it's. You know, yeah, we I mean, talk, that, we talk about how people go to. You know, they say. You know, I don't go to Walmart because I like the Walmart style. Occasionally, I'll go if I have to go yeah. for a certain thing. But at the same point, I'll be in doing something else and not realizing I'm probably going to another distributor doing the same thing that Walmart does. You know, yeah. People yeah. go to people go to McDonald's <laughs> to get food. And McDonald's actually, they say, you know, if you see different things where they're against this, this, and this happening in the business world, and they're against like you know people not getting paid wages, and McDonald's is one of the biggest leaders in using prisoners to do a lot of their stuff as far as development and how they have them as a part of their resources right so they're basically using prison labor so it's the more you find out things along the lines kind of determines how you're going to act or react to it I mean, you try to be as consistent as you can across the board but there'll be some things that pop through i mean in the beer fest i went to a few weeks ago i slipped up and got a beer from one and ended up being curmudgeon from founders I didn't pour it out because it was in my cup. So I drank and it. And it's a delicious <laughs> beer, so you drink it. That's what you do. It was the oh, old. Was it, yeah. was it the curmudgeon's better half? Yeah, it oh, was, right? Yeah. So I, so I drank it. It wasn't like I just poured it out and threw it out of my cup in disgust or whatever, you know. But at the same time, he wasn't buying it specifically. So, like, your right, money went right. to whatever it was. It was just he wasn't buying a four pack of it or something, you yeah. know. I had to give him my ticket for it. <laughs> there, there you go. Show you. So Give me your ticket, Rod. You would not get my ticket for this one. In New York State, there's a law you can't return beer, so I guess I'm stuck with the case of Flushing Monk. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't buy a case of Flushing Monk. Well, that's the thing. I've got a lot of founders downstairs. I haven't bought any since then, but I've, I've still I mean, got it. Got and, it like, and like, Right, and like you said, is like the people is burning their nights. Like, you already bought them. Why, why are you burning them now? Yeah. So it's like you already got it. Why not drink it? And founders, I mean, it's – for a long time has been maybe my favorite brewery out there or, you know, yeah. that you can get regularly. So but, but it's, inter it's an interesting point that you bring up there, Joe. It's like, what do you, I don't know, like, where do you draw the line or how you cross and how do you put it all together as to what's right for one and what's right for the other? I guess it's just a personal level. I mean, I don't know. 
Because I'm sure there's a lot more stuff going on at other places that oh, yeah. you just don't know about. So yeah. it's like, it's, like where you pick, else, right? it's just picking and choosing, you know, at this point, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to convince myself to go buy Blushing Monk and Rubeus and do a side by side. That's what I'm trying to do is convince yeah. myself. <laughs> don't look do like because, go ahead, Eric. Joe, don't do it because it's a wine cooler. <laughs> I've had blushing monk before, Eric, and it's delicious. Now it this doesn't have coconut. is a wine cooler, Joe. I don't listen to somebody who doesn't like coconut. That's what you draw the line. <laughs> now that's stepping over the boundaries right there. <laughs> yeah, I think it's definitely a decision. I mean, it's kind of like the Great Lake Brewing news that we talked about. There's probably some breweries like I thought it was kind of funny, or I didn't see a problem with it, or blah blah blah. Not all were against it or whatever, but I mean. You know, do you not go to those breweries because they support the guy or whatever? I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a, like you said, to each their own. So uh, I'm probably gonna go buy Blushing Monk tomorrow. So there you so, go. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, I I might do it, just not. And tonight. nobody and nobody will say anything to you about it. I mean, it's yeah. no, you know. no. I I kind of want to do a head to head between Rubeus and Blushing Monk. I remember Blushing Monk being like Rubeus on steroids. That's what I remember that beer being. I used to love it. Now Eric's saying it's a wine cooler. Guess what? It was already a wine cooler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing too also the other, the other thing too with founders it's a matter of now seeing what happens going forward so they brought the other person i'm kind of interested to see how the lawsuit is proceeding as well because i think that's on the yeah. i think that might go to a settlement or something but you know if they realize they you know sometimes you have to get you know smacked in the ass to realize how much you screwed up or something honestly I used to say you got a hard head but a soft ass you keep screwing up you know um to see if you know whatever this diversity chief they brought in or whatever how that changes things up or things like that i mean i, I don't does. i'm not up there where they're at in michigan i know for people that said they went there they've seen stuff in the past so it'll be interesting to see if people start seeing a different feel about it or if there's still different things happening or if it's just smoke and mirrors so yeah so so would that would that change would that change your L's opinion if they were doing going the right way and then start I mean, supporting they, they, it again if they started doing the right stuff and everything, I'd have no problem yeah. maybe taking a look at it. I mean, it's kind of like right. the, whole, the whole Starbucks thing, you know, do you penalize the whole chain of Starbucks over yeah. what happened in Philadelphia? I, mean, I didn't drink Starbucks for a while, but the Starbucks came out and tried to address it. Although I thought they could address it better when they did, but they did address it like that. They started doing some other different things and, you know, Howard Schultz had to leave the company and blah, blah, blah. If companies are going out there and making things better and actually putting more back into it, then that will be something to say, okay, well, maybe we'll take a look and see how you're actually doing and make sure you're serious about it. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know if I, you know, if I see a founder's beer, they come out with one and I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I, cause they really haven't aside from Blushing mm -hmm. Monk and I haven't picked it up yet, although I'm considering it. I definitely am. Um, but, you know, I, it, it would be one of those things where, I don't know. I all the, like I like I said. I feel like I'm a hypocrite a little bit is the way I look at it myself, and I should just be a full on piece of crap or like yeah. go the other way and like make sure I don't buy a bunch of places. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's I don't want to be like I'm not going to support this place, but I'm going to support this place and this place, and then they all have different issues that might be as bad as the other one, or maybe some of them are worse. I don't know where to draw the line for myself personally. And I, I just have to figure out like, where do I draw the line? Like where to like the trillium stuff that bothers me, but you know, it's kind of shady. You know how many fucking other companies do it tons and that we have no idea about it at all it is it was shitty how they handled it. But you know, I've, I had a couple beers sent from the guys at nerd sense uh, and ended up being a couple trillion beers. And I drank them. I didn't, I, they were delicious and I enjoyed them. But would I spend money on them anymore? I, maybe if I was in Boston, I'd probably stop there. You know, I, just, I don't know. It, it's a, like you guys said earlier, it's to each their own and how you handle it. And I don't think anybody's in the right or wrong in the situation. It's just like anything else in life, right? You got to choose, choose what, how you feel and just go with it. And, right. you know, well, and the, the, world the, founders, different... the founders thing for me is kind of tricky because it's like, it's, has it, has any other people come out and said that the same thing has happened to them or is it just the one guy is, is it kind of like his word against theirs? i mean not to say if it's happened it's shitty you know yeah. founders need well, to address it if it was a disgruntled employee and he's coming out and just trying to get back at him or something yeah you know what's what's the whole scenario no i mean the, the the person that's got the lawsuit against founders it, their stuff's all documented they've been through hr hr has files and stuff of the situations he's brought to them and everything so that was pretty legit the other people people i've known or i say i i know through some of the other groups that are up in michigan i went to it have said in some of our other uh beer groups how 
they have felt when they've been in those type of situations. They felt like you could feel it in the air. You could feel ways like some of the employees would treat some of them when they were there drinking and stuff and how they would get skipped over on things. So there was a feeling that it wasn't just this one guy, but this guy, okay. you know, his stuff's been documented. So right. that's the whole thing that's taking place. And it, for me, I you know, I think if I, if I was there at Founders, you know, I wanted to be like, well, if I was there, I, I don't know, I might be in a lawsuit myself. I don't know how it will work out. But anyway, <laughs> from a marketing standpoint, it's like, look, you you admit, you know, this stuff is all happening. If you got document all stuff, you got to admit you screwed up, right? You right. got to admit that. And then you do something like that to show some type of way to respond back to it. You know, like, for instance, when Sierra Nevada had the thing with the uh, the fires, how they donated a certain amount of each can to something to the fireman fund, mm -hmm. or you have some of the other local ones to save fish and do other stuff. You pick a group, a local community group type thing, and every dollar or every 50 cent from this beer or whatever is going to be donated back to this group in that community to help grow it. And that starts to change, and that shows you taking a step back into something. That's one of the more common things that companies will actually do that when they realize they have something like that on there. I don't know why that might not have been addressed or whatever. It's not to be like any type of extortion like that. It's just a way to show faith that, hey, we want everybody to be accepted the same. We messed up. Let us show that we're serious about what we're doing and we want everybody to be a part. You got to do something to, to do that. You can't just sit on your hands. So, yeah, I think the response, they, 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 that was, that was probably the key thing is the response. They, they, like it could have been just, a, um, you know, an incident that happened and even just in an area of the company, but the right. fact that HR didn't, and it could have been just one person or a couple people in HR. It might, may not be all of HR. It could be a lot of things. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like there, there could be, there could be a lot of things. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to feel. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's, I mean, it's just a, it's a weird thing because even like, not even like in this situation. Although this was kind of more of a risk component. You have some of the stuff with the female component. With the, there's women oh. that are out there having trouble with breweries as well. Oh yeah. And it's like, you just, it's got to break away from that frat household mentality. You yeah, know, just you're treat, not in frats. You got to go out here and do things and treat people with the proper respect. Treat people like you want to be treated. That's right. the, that's the old adage, right? Like you you treat treat them how you want to be treated. Go to rule. Yeah, yeah and I'm right. mostly mostly everyone wants to be treated with respect and just as a just a human being. And if you can't do that, then mm -hmm. then that's on you. Yeah, because that other stuff will cost you extra if you pay for it. So <laughs> uh, I, I get to the get to the uh, get to the get to the comments because we we have been neglecting them. Yes. Uh, Foamy had thirteen, who's probably not here anymore. Says, "Hey guys, having a bell's too hard to cheers." What's up, Foamy? Nice, hey, Foamy. Nice, nice solid, solid, solid IPA. Solid. Yeah, that, that's a classic. That's a motherfucking classic. Uh, Fishy Angler shows up and says, "Okay, what are we drinking today? What's up, guys?" Smiley face. Cheers, Fishy. Well, I'm drinking the Platform Coffee Lawlessness. I got three of them here. I cannot I wait for the double too hard to come out. Me either. Settle down, Eric, but also I agree. I'd like because I had that on tap at the uh, Michigan Beer Fest like three, four years ago. <laughs> And it was fucking delicious. Yeah, it's coming delicious. out in July. In July. Delicious. <laughs> we should. We should. Uh, you know what? Maybe set that up, and we'll do uh, a live review on my channel when that comes out. You guys want to? Like all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah brother. Good. All right. We'll, we'll we'll do that. When did you say July? Jesus Christ, that's a long time. I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is. Probably, uh, it'll probably come out on the fourth. Watch. I, I'm I'm babying safety scissors, which is now gone because I gotta watch this figure. I gotta watch it. I can't be crazy with the calories. It you can tell I'm not. I'm not watching mine, brother. Eric, no one said anything. No one said anything. <laughs> Someone says I got a six pack. I'm like, bitch, I got a keg. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hashtag keg. Well, so, so what were you drinking, Eric and Todd? But I'm still on the uh, the Scotty Karate. Yeah, high five, baby. Yeah, man, nurse it, nurse it. <laughs> Put a nipple on it. Do it. It's Valentine's Day. At nine point seven. <laughs> oh, that's a little. That's a little bit better. Mine's four point two, so a little bit better. That's it's twelve ounce bottle, though, right? It's twelve ounce bottle. I just cracked open a uh, brewery here in Indiana, in Brown County, Indiana. Uh, Quaffon Busted Knuckle Peanut Butter Porter. How was it? I just actually just released it. Eh. No, it's okay. Totally fucking disappointing, like most peanut butter bears. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not, not exactly. exactly. Not one at all. Yo, no. I, 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 the, nose of, the nose of it doesn't smell like peanut butter at all. It almost smells like the uh, Crunch and Munch peanut, like, oh, that's, that's toffee, buttery yeah. flavor. Yeah. Kind of, uh, it's kind of weird. Butter? 
Yo, well, butter? I don't know about butter. <laughs> yeah, like popcorn kind of. Yeah, I don't some brewing faults, perhaps <laughs> not sounding the great. Diactyl? What? Yeah. Um, we mentioned I mentioned Sweet Baby Jesus. Is that probably the best peanut butter porter anybody's had? The Sweet Baby Jesus? No, no. So, so, uh, no. Uh, I had um a beer sent from the Nerd Sense guys, Gunner's Daughter. It's a five point five percent chocolate peanut butter, or just a peanut butter uh, milk stout. If well, I get my hands on more, butter porter, is it? who the fuck stout? cares? It's a peanut butter beer. <laughs> <laughs> as, far as, as far as peanut butter porters go, though. Well, you say trick question. Stouts are porter. So. Yeah, now the, well, the best one I had was from uh, Hoppin' Frog. <laughs> oh, you had the Hoppin' Frog coffee? Was that the coffee one? Or yes. Yeah. Yes. The coffee. That one was phenomenal. I mean, that was so good. So, so, so Rod, to, to answer your question, um, I'm actually so cheap plug for my shitty channel. Uh, this this Monday, I'm doing a head to head live on Monday, 8 p.m. I think maybe I don't know. Don't, don't check out my channel, but it's uh, I'm gonna do Sweet Baby Jesus against Sweet Baby Java. Ooh, just to see what the difference is. Both of those. Every time I've had Sweet Baby Jesus, I've always been disappointed because the nose is amazing and the taste just always lets me down like most peanut butter beers. So I'm hoping it's different this time. Have you had Baby Java before? I have not. That's what, that's Ooh, what I kind of want to do. All right. So it should be fun to see the comparison and, you know, have two beers at once. I yeah. mean, what's not to like? <laughs> so make sure you put something in the comments so that people can see where your channel is. They can link over I told, and check it out. I told you. No if you don't want to look at it, don't put anything yeah, yeah. in there, I guess. But yeah, so... Joe's using the reverse psychology on people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 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 Jedi school. <laughs> I always reverse. I always wonder why people subscribe to my like channel. I just that's on them. Did you ever see the episode of Seinfeld where uh, George decides you know, anything, anything that anybody suggests he's just going to say yes to? No. You ever saw it was actually when the funny episode, episode and everything starts going well for him that day. Like they say, you should do that. Okay, I will. And he like does something great. He does. Something, it's like what if he just told everybody no for one day? No, <laughs> not just do the opposite of whatever no. they ask you. <laughs> no. 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 Probably wouldn't work at work too well. So, 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 to, so to answer Rod's original question, sweet baby Jesus, your favorite pe peanut butter porter? Sorry, Rod, peanut butter porter. PVP, yeah. PVP. If not, what's a, what's what's been your favorite peanut butter porter? Well, I can. Okay, so Victory at Sea is Imperial. It's Imperial. Okay, so Imperial's on a different level. All We're right. saying regular porter. So probably regular Imperial. porter, probably yes for me. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I can't think of any more, many more peanut butter pours off the top of my head. <laughs> well, we can always get more peanut butter beers. That's for sure, because they're making yeah. one crazy. Well, now, the Reese's that? the Reese's pieces one I had from four fifty was pretty good, but I don't know if that was a. I don't know if they considered that a porter or they were calling uh, that. Only that. God, four fifty. Yeah. God, four fifty. God, we're gonna need. God, we're gonna need you to. How do you say shut up right now? <laughs> Where were you at that one, Todd? I love Reese's. Where were you? Yeah. Todd, Todd's like not sorry. What you don't know what the base? <laughs> sorry, not sorry. You, not you sorry, don't... Reese's. Was it just a generic L that they did? Is that what they did, or was it like an actual style? Do you you don't know? I, I can't remember how they were actually. I'm going to say it was probably. I'd have to look it up now. I don't know if because we just had it again at the brewery last weekend. They still had it on tap. Which it was, it, it's it's good. It is. It, it was, is. It is an imperial milk stout. Mix milk stout. Okay. Reese's peanut flour, cocoa powder, and milk sugar. Yeah. And if you guys haven't had the peanut butter, pretty cup, damn good in there. Oh man, they're, they're delicious. They're, they're, they're so delicious. They're so fucking them. delicious. God damn it. I was like, how um, do you take all hey. this time before you decide to put the Reese's pieces in the peanut butter cup? How does it take this long? Just give me all the Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah. All of them. No, I haven't had one of those yet. Oh, they're addicted. That's on you, Todd. You yeah, that's out. why. That's why I haven't had one because I'm afraid where it might end up. <laughs> yeah, didn't. Good job, Four fifty North to sponsor this uh, live stream. Yeah, Todd yeah. has, has made that happen. Uh, no, Mark Four fifty North can sponsor whatever the hell they want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I mean, they yeah. There's no, you will never hear there's too much 450 North talk on this chat unless you're exactly. Yeah. Uh, Martin Colmer says he had two Southern tier uh, double IP or two times IP. They're double IP. Oh, yeah. Two X IP. I like that yeah. one. And yeah. now maybe That's a good some one. Scotch. I would, the three X's out of you guys. I, I've not picked that I've up. I've never seen a three X. Yeah. It's out. It's out. I haven't, haven't tried it yet. Yeah. I, I don't know. Southern tiers. I like their Blackwater series, right? They yeah. like the cherry cores and all that stuff. But like when it comes to their regular beers, they're good. And I grew, you know, grew into craft beer, drinking a lot of stuff. But I've never been really pumped up. But I think the three X might be fun to try. I like the two X Christmas too. That's actually pretty good. That is good. 
Like what do you think of the 2X series, Joe, the overall? Oh, I, I like them, but I haven't drank a lot of them. And it, like we, we talked about like some of these beers that like Burning River from uh, Great Lakes, like I haven't had like a 2X IP probably in like four or five years. Like seriously, it's been a, it's been a while. Uh, you so. better get a four pack of it or six pack and do it. Eric, I can't pick the calories. <laughs> <laughs> I Joe has four. like what, 400 beers in his cell. Broken one wanted to move into my cellar. Yeah. I can't imagine what you do if he saw yours, Joe. He would probably just live down here for a while <laughs> and just see what happens. Um, I, I would probably be losing box by box. Uh, very, I was going to say, sh you know, piece by piece, but probably be like night by night. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Cody Stark says they're going to be carrying Rod out of Guinness. That seems appropriate. It's a possibility. To. It's a possibility. I'll come out talking Irish, too. <laughs> Put me <Yep>. down. <laughs> Dude, so you guys still not, I've not seen any of you guys review it or even mention it, but the, I did the the, the it's a bullet bourbon barrel aged out from them. Have you guys not seen that yet in your area? I haven't seen it yet here. I'm going to pick it up when I see it. Though. Oh, okay. I gotta, I'm going to go to Jungle Gyms probably and do a run at some point, even though I don't need to. I don't need to. But I know they probably have it. It's fucking delicious. It was, it, well, I would say it was really good, and it surprised me, all things considered. But, yeah, it was, it was pretty fucking good. The only thing was I always find Antwerp a bit thin. So, like, in the barrel, it, I don't think yeah. the body held up well, but, like, the flavors were. You find Antwerp and thin, but not compared to the other Guinness line. Like I find Antwerp, and if you put it up against a Ford Extra Stout, yeah, it's a little bit thin. But that's what I'm like, versus like, the I, regular Guinness stuff, it's definitely more to it. I, I find like Antwerp, and I wouldn't necessarily take that beer and throw it in a barrel. Is the way I look at it. Like it's, I think it's. I knew it wasn't going to hold up, and I kind of knew going in that's what it was going to. I. That's why I gave it like a pass for the body because I'm like, I get it. It's Antwerp, yeah. but it, I understand what's going to happen. Um, Drunk one says a few uh, bad apples that ruined the whole bunch. Me, drink what you want. And he does. He does, and he does it well. Yeah. <laughs> Rain our parade shows up and says he hates everybody almost equally. That's one way to uh, live life. <laughs> hey. <everyone. laughs> Equal opportunities. Equal. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, boy. Confirmation of my palate's not incredibly stupid. It's horrible. Actually, Elbow88 says, I just opened a dabble from Six Point. Yes, Joe. I'm tasting some pina colada. Yeah. Because it's fantastic. That's all for I thought you were going to do the robot there for a second. I don't know. I was going to break it out. I don't know. I was like, look at Or maybe you were miming a box. I didn't know what was that. Yeah, I don't I don't know. That was just me not knowing what I was doing. Uh, Cody Stark says, I think I may buy a two-heart clone from Bells for my first brew. That's not a bad one to uh, – you at least know what you're getting into, and you know what it tastes like. So it's like, okay, did I do a good job? Well, if it kind of tastes close to it, then yes. Yeah. But uh, it's your first time. So, yeah, doing something that's familiar is probably the way to go. Yeah, patience is the big thing when you start mm -hmm. brewing. It's just like, especially those first batches, you want to taste it, and it's like, you got to let it go, got to let it go. Yeah, and you have to understand that it's going to probably take you a while to be able to brew really, really good beer. So it's like, you know, it's like anything else. You start off as a novice. That's how it goes. Foamy Head says he's still here. I don't know why, but I am. That makes <laughs> all of us. <laughs> That's what we say all the time. Yeah. But we appreciate it. <laughs> we, do, we, do, we do appreciate it. I'm sorry I got to your comment late. We got into the whole founders talk, and then I like I wanted to recomment, but we're having a good discussion, and then I'm like, I don't know what's happening, and then we got so appreciate you getting in there. Uh, Drunk One says, drinking my Valentine's Day gift, Yellow Rose by Lone Point. Uh, Lone Pine, 6.8% smash IP. And I've heard great things about that, Drunken One. So uh, next time we do a trade, you will have to slip in a fresh a fresh yellow rose for me. I've heard really good things about that going back years. Um, yeah, I know you love it. I <laughs> it's, it's a lot of <laughs> uh, Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay. No, I was going to – I was just I was going to say uh, one thing we did bring up, it is like, well, an hour left for Valentine's Day. We know Cody – and his lady went to the uh, brewery. Did anybody else do anything out there for Valentine's Day? If you want to say in the comments, you know. Oh, oh yeah, the comments. If they, yeah, if they did anything along those lines, but yeah, be curious to know. Uh, Cody Stark says, "I would like to start, find a stout that tastes like Reese's peanut butter cups." You'll find a lot that smell like it, and then you'll <laughs> taste it and be pissed off because that's pretty much how it goes. It's like Tom this. Might be, might be the closest one. We don't know because we didn't get to taste it. Only Ty can tell us what the reason. Yeah, Ty. Yeah, it was pretty <laughs> damn close. <laughs> if they ever release that again, 
Yeah, you'll get some. I will PayPal you and Shannon to take off from work that day. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. Sweet. That, yeah. All right, I've, I've got myself pickled in a corner here. I'm no, like, no, no. If, if they do, <laughs> well, she she's off every Friday now, so, she, you know, oh, hey. Right. Oh, now we got to run at her 450 North. Oh, my. We yeah. can start making our checks go right over here and payroll. Well, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. 450 North yeah. from the line we can do it every now and again. I don't know about every release, but. <laughs> Yo, know, their little birdie told me before the end of the month they'll be hitting up other half. So I just, you know, I just say, Jesus, it, 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 all, it all works oh, out in the end. Just, just and say, by Jesus, I mean send it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, so I was, was gonna good. send it. I was really upset because the last two weeks it's uh, other half's fifth anniversary, and they brought each week like nine or 10 beers to the Rochester location. And I'm talking wow. crazy Imperial stouts. They had the craziest adjunct mm -hmm. Imperial stout. There had to be 12 different adjuncts in there. They call it like cookie monster. So it was just like, it was probably a mess of a beer, but it sounded good. The problem is they did it on a Saturday morning. People were getting there at like three, 4 a.m. for a, a 9 a.m. release. And by 9 a.m., pretty much everything was gone. So I was like, I'm not gonna Damn. go. Yeah. Line for six wow. hours. And then they and then they never told people what they were uh doing limits wise until you got there. And when they got there, they told everybody one four pack of everything, and that's it. You get one four pack and, and one bottle, I guess, of each stout. And everyone's like, but wait in line for six hours. Like, I only want three beers. I, I want a case of each one. They're like, too bad. But like you could have told them at three, like you could have yeah. told them before, so they didn't show up. Like, I'm always of the proponent, you don't need more than a four pack of anything or a six pack, right? You don't need it. But if someone goes to that release with the mindset like most of their limits are a case and you only want two or three beers of the stuff they're releasing and you get there early and they're like, Oh, well now you can have one fourth or one sixth of what you could have, you know, wanted. It's pretty shitty. So yeah, the, you know, the, the moral of the story is don't wait in line. Not well, I think they, I think they ought to limit you to one of each first time through the line to a certain point. Yeah, Let yeah. everybody have a chance to get, cause 450 North is the same thing. You can get five or six, four packs of something. Yeah. The first time through, and it's like people stand in line. Everybody works on a Friday most of the time, you know. Why not have a, a chance to get everybody to get through? Then, if you're through the first time, you know, say let's, you know, new maybe it goes till noon. After that, free game. You buy what you want after that. I, I totally agree. And, and like I said, I'm always a guy that I don't think everyone needs cases of beers, like, you know, especially releases and stuff. A four pack should be fine. I know everyone wants to trade and hook up their buddies and stuff. And I, I mean, I do the same thing, right? But if you, can't tell people the night before how, what the <laughs> limits are then what the hell mm -hmm. like, you know you know how much you brought from brooklyn to rochester it's you know it's like a five hour drive five and a half hour drive you know what you brought right yeah. you know how many cases yeah. exactly of everything you have you could just say hey this we have this many cases we're gonna go with four pack per person if we don't have the turnout then we'll up the limits or whatever and yeah. it's just stupid that they didn't and a lot of people were pissed off and it's like then i wouldn't have went if they didn't tell me the limits and you wanted something specific then just don't go it's all you it seems to me it seems to me it'd even be in a brewery's best interest to do that because to me it seems like you'd be getting into more hands as opposed yeah. to the yeah well the other maybe you got 20 people it's buying it all as opposed to 100 people getting one pack each or whatever you know well, the other side of the coin is they probably went to hype there too so they tell people ahead of time and they limit so they want to have people yeah, they do. Stuff, so. Yeah, oh, uh, sure. Yeah, there's a lot of marketing and everything goes into it. I'm sure. See, if you're me, I'll, I'll just get pissed off and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Especially Start turning small. over tables. Especially <laughs> Eric. Eric is exactly. like flipping tables. What the fuck? <laughs> Eric, Eric goes in full WWE mode right at the right at the room. And then he gives him the BSA on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would pay money for Eric to go to a beer release and on the way out after just do his PSA right everybody. He's like, by the way, guys, if you drink too much, and he's like, oh god, this is the best thing ever. And you know my spiel by now, but if you don't, I'm gonna say it anyway. I almost want to see a video on that. I almost want to see a video on that now. Yeah, no, no, it's gotta be done at some point, Eric. I don't care how long it takes. When it happens, it's gotta happen now. I can see people be like, "What the fuck are you talking?" Just about, man? the best thing, <laughs> randomly out of nowhere, you just turn around and say, "If you had too much to drink, everyone." Uh, I, I can see now, just go like this, be like, everybody's attention. Uh, if you've had too much to drink, nobody like, what the this guy? What the fuck? Oh, man. That would be, <laughs> that'd be that'd awesome. awesome. I have that big of stones there, Todd. Eric, that would be, Eric, be like your highest video. Just uh, as soon as you release it, it would be like viral instantly. Somebody in the crowd would be like, I knew I knew that guy from somewhere. <laughs> I heard that from somewhere. I heard it from somewhere. 
<laughs> um, finish up these comments so we can move on to do something else. Uh, Cody Stark says, does 450 North distribute in Michigan? Not I don't think so. I don't think so. Nope, they don't. They don't. They don't. But they're not I'm far not from the Michigan border, are they, though? Like, how far are they from the Michigan border, technically? As far as I know, I think they only distribute in Indiana, but I, I could be wrong on that. Yeah, I think they only distribute to Indiana, don't they, Tom? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Well, and a Go. lot of their and a lot of their releases are brewery only to begin with. Yeah. Well, all the stuff that I've been sending you guys are just really brewery only stuff. Now they do have some distro, which I ought to send you guys some of that stuff just so you can see your opinion, maybe on which is still good stuff, but not not the highest, you know. Of the specialty stuff. Todd, I guess. Todd, we don't want to be disappointed, Todd. We don't want to be disappointed. <laughs> Todd, well, no, you might, might even appreciate it a little more, even. Todd, says, I, would, I would like to get some of the distro stuff. If it says yeah, fifty, yeah. send it. <laughs> I, I, I even mentioned in one of my my reviews, Todd, that I did that I would like to I would like to try like just a pilsner from them or something that isn't adjunct all the hell and fuck it. Just like, can you make a, a decent regular beer? I'd be no, cool no, I, no, I'll, I'll get some of that stuff out to you guys. I'll do that. I'll be curious to see. Uh, he also says, speaking of, uh, uh, what he said? Speak, <laughs> speaking of speaking Irish, I got drunk one night and a few months back, my girlfriend says I had the best Russian accent she's ever heard. <laughs> 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 Those are good times to start talking other languages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Subtitles, subtitles. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, he says, great. I started playing guitar 12 years ago and just, and just within the past couple of years have really felt like I'm going to be very good. So I'm expecting brewing to kind of be like that also. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, be another 450, okay? Yeah. Uh, Eric Gilbert asked, uh, replied to your question there. Rodney said, I worked for Valentine's Day and ate wings. <laughs> 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 I thought Cody went to Frankenmuth. I guess it was. No, I, said, I, said, I said that was Eric Gilbert who said Oh, that. Eric Gilbert, okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. He said, well, we already, he already told us he was eating the wings. As yeah, we yeah. We ate with the garlic parmesan. And then head coach followed that up with, I worked for wings and ate my Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, GSHLT, that, yeah, that's a, that's an open can of worms. Right GSHLT <laughs> says, Rob is a beer god. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> if I could always sit on Mount Olympus, I would. <laughs> Mount it would be a, it'd be a chiku of right? be Because a you haven't tried yet. <laughs> Home with the Rod J deals. Uh, exactly. Cody, Cody Stark says we have a tube system at the hospital. And every time I send something through it, I have to say, "Just gonna send it." <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fantastic. Oh, God, that good. <laughs> then Cody says, "Make sure someone records uh, Eric if he does it." Yeah. I mean, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Oh man, and that's pretty Challenge. much it. We have we have thrash metal and uh, GSHL. Well, he's saying nice. They're, 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 they're I think saying uh, <laughs> welcome to GSHL TV and hi and what's up. Yeah, and drunken and drunken one, of course, drunken one back. <laughs> Some pretty good stuff. Um, <laughs> so you got all the comments and everything there. Yeah, I think I think we're pretty much caught up. Uh, all right. yep. Let's see here. So a few other things here. I can't believe we've been going for a couple. I've been great participation tonight, so thanks for everybody commenting and all the fun and everything. Um, Goodwill, Goodwood Brewing, which is down out of Louisville, so Todd knows them. They're actually expanding into now whiskey to also start doing distillery, I guess, for that. So it's kind of interesting, and I wonder what you guys are thinking about that in the breweries you're around, where they're starting to break into maybe more of a whiskey line. Is there something maybe going on to try to increase profits or? Any thoughts or feedback on that? I saw somebody post something on that today on Facebook. Um, one of the local groups here was showing, taking a picture of it. And it was a big bottle, whiskey, whatever, mm -hmm. good wood, good wood on it. And I guess they're maybe getting hit with a lawsuit of some sort from another like brewery or a bourbon maybe distributor because of, I'm, I'm not really sure the whole story on it. I didn't. Hmm. Okay. Somebody just made a comment about it. Like you'll see it, but now you won't see it anymore because they'll probably just pull it off the shelf because you're getting hit with some sort of with something. I'm, I'm like not sure the whole desist, like a cease and desist. Yes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, uh, exactly. Yeah. Check into that. Okay. That's so I, and I haven't looked or seen anything else on it. I just saw the comments and they're like, "Hang on to that bottle because it might be worth something at some point because you may not see it again anymore because you're getting hit with the like you said a cease and des desist or whatever." Uh, yeah. 
So I'm not sure what exactly who's actually doing it, but anyway. So go ahead, Joe, because then it looks like. Oh, say I, I just, yeah, I just forget <laughs> because I'm old. I, uh, today, <laughs> today the, the guys over at the Party Source, or yesterday, they did a uh, 100 or 1,000 subscriber live stream and they did the Goodwood uh, Bear, um, was it Stout Finished uh, Whiskey? And then they compared it to the barrel aged stout that they had as well. And they did a comparison. So check that out. Uh, the party source on YouTube. Okay. Uh, they did. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was good. They did good wood. It was, um, I forgot exactly what the name of it was, but it was bourbon barrel aged stout. And then they did the whiskey that was finished with the stout itself. So I thought that was cool that they did. They did a, it was called cross. I think the name of it. Let me see. Do I have it here? Uh, uh live 1000, uh, K sub. Thank you. Crossover review. Cause they brought in the guy who does the, the, the uh, whiskey reviews and uh, Amos who does the beer reviews and they, yeah. and they did both beers and it was it was really cool it's only like 13 minutes long so it wasn't too long uh, but yeah they they actually shout, shouted out Rod they shouted out you they shouted out me did they for, really yeah oh, so wow. check it out was it J O that did it everything because I haven't got a chance to watch yeah. it yet That's yeah it was cool. it was J O with Amos and uh, I forgot the guy who does the whiskey um, but yeah it was it was all three of them and they did the Goodwood nice. the two products so yeah check it out for sure yeah now, Rod you get Rod you get Goodwood there right. Oh, every, never mind. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, my <laughs> Lord. God, what are you doing, guys? Yeah, I'll, I'll open that up. Yeah, I'll open yeah, it up. Yeah, it's right. always, it's yeah. always good, baby. Always talking good. about talk, talk, That's what she said, maybe. <laughs> that's, why that's why he's getting hit on at a beer fest. As far as beer <laughs> goes, exactly. good wood. Yeah. Not, not your unit. <laughs> the big yeah. unit? Randy Johnson? Oh, God. Yeah. Johnson. <laughs> Pitching killer. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, uh, sharp. <laughs> yeah, we get good wood here as well. So um, I've had a few <laughs> of their beers. They like to get falling apart here. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're uh, they're kind of an up and down brewery for me. I've I've had some, I agree. Like, I've had some that were kind of like okay, but they're kind of like almost like an all tech. Um, but yes, yes, that's a good comparison. Stuff. Yeah, some of their bourbon stuff I've liked. So I'll be interested to check them out um, to see what's going on. But I'll definitely take a look into that more about the whiskey type thing as well. And then check out J.O.'s video too. To see what yeah, from, for me, they've been more, they're more missed than they are hit. Yeah. Yeah. So there's not a lot around them. I mean, they don't really jump off at anything that I've tried from them, but, but they have a couple that are kind of, kind of decent. You know, you always got to find what you like from different breweries. So, All right. I need to get some more beers from out of that part of the state at some point as well. But uh, the Party Source Reviews is the channel that Joe mentioned. Everybody wants to check them out on that J.O.'s channel. Yep, and and just look for if you want to check out the good wood review. <laughs> it's called it's called the uh, Live 1000K Sub Thank You Crossover Review. It's a mouthful. It's like their yeah. like their third to last video they posted, but it's uh yeah, it, it was a good one. I enjoyed it. Uh, we also have a comment from Cody, which says, uh, "Thanks for doing the live stream tonight, guys. Wish I could join more. Always a great time. My cousin enjoyed it when he saw it a couple weeks back. That's awesome. awesome. Thanks, Cody. But, do, but does he remember? Because yeah. weren't they like hammered that night? Yeah, when... he was getting pretty hammered. <laughs> <laughs> I I wasn't here, Cody. So it was well, clearly a better time. Hopefully, Cody, your cousin, subscribed as well. You can check out more of the videos. He, he did. You now have 751. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> he was number 750. Yeah. <laughs> no, his cousin was getting lit that night. So. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> um, Martin Colmer uh, mentions that Metallica is doing a beer. They, they did the, the Pilsner uh, for, with Stone. And then uh, he and then Thrash Metal Homebrew says, I heard that Metallica's beer sucks. I, I, haven't, heard... I haven't found it and tried it yet, but that's I've... the Pilsner they did, yeah. Yeah, it's just like a slightly more hoppy pilsner than basically one for, I guess. So, yeah, you would think Metallica would want something a little bit more, you know, maybe not. I was thinking maybe a porter, probably, or stuff. Yeah. yeah, everybody was kind of saying they thought it'd be a dark beer they would have done. Yeah, but I would imagine a lot of Metallica fans don't drink craft beer, so to drink a lager, but make it maybe a little bit more in the stone, yeah, they could like like do like a Sandman stout or something. Yeah, they could have. Yeah. Instead, they went with a hoppy pilsner because that's what Stone does nowadays. No, I'm just, yeah. We think Metallica, we think hoppy. Does that feel like <laughs> it's not Heineken? When I, when I think it's Metallica, I don't think they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think Hetfield likes his Heineken. That's why they. Well, oh, isn't isn't he sober now? Wasn't, wasn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah. 
He liked Ty Well, he wouldn't have liked this being that. If but I think that. back in the day, he loved this Heineken. He loved this Heineken. <laughs> That's why he hasn't tasted it. Otherwise, he'd be like, what is that? <laughs> our name on? What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for fuck's sake. Uh, Drunken One says, that's why I'm here. That is why you're here, Drunken One, for good wood. Foamy Head says he's now having a Lagunitas Maximus. That's, that's a good one. That's a good beer, yeah. yeah. Usually, when one. someone says I'm having Lagunitas whatever, and it's followed up with a good beer, we shouldn't say that because we all know that they make good <laughs> it's beer. It's a good beer, yeah. It's hard not to say that because it's fucking usually right. It's just like Which, yeah. again, if you're in Chicago or if you're out in Petaluma, I've never been to the Petaluma one, but Chicago, you got a chance to go to Lagunitas, go. I mean, it's at least the one in Chicago was pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, if I'm in Chicago, I'm definitely hitting up Lagunitas and Goose Island. Fuck it. Hitting up both. They do the beer tour. They take care of you in the beer tour. I'll tell him I know Rajay. Yeah, I know, I know Rajay Beer Ventures. Come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, That'll help you out a little bit. Actually, yeah. If you head up my boy Kyle, he'll probably take care of you out there. Here comes Kyle? the red carpet. Kyle? Yeah. <laughs> they lock you in a room for four hours and you don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's what's up uh martin colmer said the whiskey they issued was rated pretty well i doubt i try their beer yeah i mean I don't know. Just, fair enough yeah i i, I can see I that mean, it's, when i tried it initially i don't, I don't know if i ever went out and bought any of it but i know initially i tried it at mm. beer fest and i think most of the time i've had it has been at beer fest yeah. uh, the different festivals that i went to i don't think i've actually went out to uh actually purchase any of their beers i have to look back see if i did any videos on them who, who are you talking about? Goodwood. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's what Martin was talking about. Yeah. He said he would, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I got you. I got you. Um, I just want to hear you say, say it again. Okay. Uh, Eric Gilbert <laughs> says, it's the night for, quote, Goodwood. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm going to that in about 45 minutes or so, but he still got time. <laughs> He said, hey, baby, grab me a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> move on to the next comment from Cody. Both of them. He said, you were pretty damn lit in reference to a couple weeks ago with his cousin. He said, talk about a hangover. He had Natty Rush. That's on him. Yeah. <laughs> and then we out him very quickly as well. And then, and then he said, and we also busted out the crown app. Well, that's yeah. why. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> idea. Especially after having Natty Rush, he was probably hurting you, didn't yeah, yeah. I remember, I, if I remember correctly, I think he was t to the porcelain god at some point that night. I think I was gonna say, yeah, yeah, I think so. Wow, he was given back and not in a good way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Cody Stark bust out the dad jokes, which I enjoy. James Hotfield, <laughs> now that would have been an awesome beer. Yeah. Yeah. James yeah. Hotfield. yeah, I like it though, it's good. Uh, <laughs> Elbow says, Cody. I always like jamming with good guitar players. I play keys. Check out my channel. Nice. <laughs> we got a band developing in the comment section right now. <laughs> when you guys make it big, remember Rajay Beer Ventures. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that might be the band name. Rajay Beer Ventures. <laughs> It'll be Rajay Deals. That'll be the name of the band. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Martin Colmer says, I want to thank Rod for turning me on to the Beer Street Journal. Awesome. Oh, cool. Thanks. Yeah, it's a good and site for a lot of beer stuff. Ho hopefully they do no satire at any point in the year. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice. laughs> <laughs> but that guy's been fired. So, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Cody, Cody then uh, finishes up with, uh, it's that obvious I'm a dad. <laughs> Laughing my ass off. <laughs> I didn't think you were dad. I just said the joke was a dad joke. But now that you're dad, it totally makes sense. <laughs> I appreciate it, and so did Eric. And that dad joke, it was nice. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So, speaking of articles and stuff, segue. Huge there was a piece that went through, and I think it was on Vine Pair or some other sites like that. It was a whole beer before wine. I don't know if you guys saw bits and pieces of that. So for some reason, it was popping up. You know, beer before wine. You know, are you really fine or something? It said it goes back to the whole beer before liquor nervous. It's like, no, if you drink all this stuff, you're going to be sick at some point. So, just, <laughs> yes. I'm even trying, so I'm even trying to compare everything. You know, they were like, no, uh, just know if you're drinking a lot of alcohol, you're going to, have to pay the reaper at some point. Um, Casey Ray, point, G Cody and his cousin, done. yeah, yeah, well, see, the cousin, <laughs> cousin thought he was good to a point and then bam, it hit him. 
Yo, he was drinking Daddy Rush. He was never at a good point at all that night. Probably. Daddy Rush. <laughs> Cody beat a good cousin. Said, "Not on the floor. Get it in the bowl." <laughs> 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 um, rage yoga so let's think about this here so another piece that came out this week talked about rage yoga it's basically yoga with beer which come on anything Sign me up. better I mean the only thing better than have a beer is probably bacon with it and swearing so apparently hmm. you're doing yoga you Swear and all that kind of stuff, get out all the extra tension, all that kind of stuff. This. And you're drinking beer when you would have <laughs> drank it too. Now, to me, I'm thinking, well, essentially, you have a room full of drunks. Because, I mean, <laughs> who else is swearing to drink a beer but drunks? But if you want to call it rage yoga, yeah. good luck with that. <laughs> I mean, I like to drop some fucks in there all the time. Like all the time, that sounds like a great time. That <laughs> that was great say, time. That'd be that'd be right up Shannon's alley, right there. Right. <laughs> like fucking stretching, give me a beer. I said a fucking quarter, not a pound. <laughs> yeah. Next time you're in a bar, just drop the f bomb, do some stretching, and like, what are you wrong? With? Yoga, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you see this raid yoga out there, that's I mean, I thought the goat yoga took it to a different level. Yeah. But now this rage yoga is kind of crazy. I like it. Just fucking get all your rage out, man. Have yeah. a beer. Like nice. Yeah. yeah you just, so, are you allowed to swear at people or just in general? You just like generic. I think you just, but wherever you're feeling, you just get it out. Oh, man. That would be a lot of fun. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but that'd be interesting. Like, I would think if I was in a rage yoga class, it'd become like at a certain point, like if we were all taking rage yoga. And you know, Joe says like, you know, fuck or something like that and everything. Then I'm thinking, I gotta come up with a better word than what he yeah. said, right? <laughs> right. Of right. the episode of Deadwood, we're all coming yeah. up with different ways to swear. And then it's on the competition. It, and then it crosses the line. <laughs> right. And you are right. like the guy from Great Lake Brewing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, excuse me. And then you're just like not satire. <laughs> yeah, you sit in an office with the so good. I was just you joking. In an office with like Will Ferrell. Like I thought we were in the safety of the circle. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I said ear muffs were cool. I don't know what happened. Oh, sp- speaking of Will Ferrell, have y'all listened to his podcast he has now? It's Ron Burgundy. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's it's pretty good. Oh, nice. I have to it's check pretty it. good. I, I saw that yeah. a, like a, like a week ago, and I was like, "This is gonna be fucking probably hilarious." But well, we listened to it on the way up to four fifty North last week, and it was the first episode. Like the first ten minutes, you're kind of like, eh, "I don't know," but then it gets going, and it's pretty fucking funny. Hmm, that'd be something to check out. Yeah, for sure. I need to listen to some more beer uh, podcasts. So, yeah. So if anybody out there listens to podcasts, check out the. Ron Burgundy podcast. Yeah, but if you ever see this thing on like I go my Facebook page and on Twitter, I posted some stuff about the rage yoga, but I'm just tempted to go into a bar and just start swearing while I'm drinking and start stretching a little bit and rage yoga. You know, just rage rage yoga. I mean, who would be great at rage yoga? Be fucking red beard. Right. Huh? Said he already rages in video games. Yeah, he already so. rages. He's always so, drinking beer, so he just starts to exercise a little bit while he's doing it. So is that how they market it? Kind of like hot yoga, but it's rage yoga. You just cuss and swear, yeah. and yeah, that's how they that's how they market and stuff. I mean, huh? If you get a chance, check it out on the Facebook page. But yeah, I could probably get down with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you swear something out that's kind of a little too personal. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, say that too wait, what? <laughs> yeah. You have to cross in that line. It's not yeah. personal. Why are you here anyway, fucking I'm just dumbass? Saying, <laughs> 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 you knew what you signed up for. What are you getting mad at me for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they just don't understand what's gonna happen. Like they had, they're like, "What's happening right now?" It's fucking rage yoga. What do you mean? Someone goes in there and they bring like their grandmother. Or <laughs> yeah, be like, Whoa, wait, wait, earmuffs, earmuffs, grandma, earmuffs. She, like, she signs up blindly, doesn't know what it really supposed to be, or whatever. <laughs> she just saw yoga, didn't read nothing else. Be like, oh, wait, what? Why is everybody yelling at me for? I don't know what's going on. <sighs> That'd be great. Out in Utah, they're trying to get over the 3-2 beer 
So they're trying to get actually high level beer, but of course, who's opposing them? The Mormons. The, church, the Mormon church is opposing them on getting to the high level. So now they're going to be working that out to see if they can get the high ABV beer. But it's kind of like the Mormons, Church of Latter day Saints, right? Like they follow the Bible. Don't they usually the Bible too? They don't have a different book, right? What are we what are we talking about? Like the Mormons, they follow the they follow the Bible, right? Nobody knows what the Mormons use. <laughs> don't, I don't, don't. When it comes to religion, I just don't. I, just, I mean, I think they use the Bible. Know. And if you if they're following the Bible, they're same guy as the guy that made water out into wine. So it's like how are you going to go against like alcohol when your guy, your boy, your boy, <laughs> throwing up alcohol parties like with no problem? So this is interesting. So maybe they have a different book. I don't know. I mean, I know the Bible and I know the Quran. You, I don't know. You know the, maybe the Mormons have an in between version. I don't know. Maybe it's an abridged. You you have to remember, Rod. There's a lot of hypocrites in this world. <laughs> and like just a few, just a few. <laughs> and it is religion, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Move on, next topic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you brought down my my, my rage yoga bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Rage is saying some curse words around Mormon. Right? <laughs> I'm um, speaking some tongue here in a minute. Yeah. Uh, the other topic I had, Cowboy Cerrone, who I'm not as familiar with, but I guess he's a UFC fighter. Yeah. At UFC 234. Apparently poured his beer into his boot and chugged it. Mm. Is there any beer you would ever pour into your own boot to chug? Hell to the no. Mm. Like if yeah. someone says, here's a fresh bottle of Utopia, but you can only drink it if you chug it out of your boot. Well, you wouldn't chug a Utopia. But. I would do it probably if my name was Cowboy Cerrone. And <laughs> I was at the UFC and I had to follow whatever my act was, which I'd imagine that's what he was doing. But he's not WWE. I mean, WWE, you can expect you Mick Foley do something crazy like that. Is there a snifter cowboy boot? <laughs> Proper glassware? I can't think of any beer. I mean, now, obviously, with some of the beers, I'll say you get like a barnyard type aroma with like some of the adjunct lagers, but I wouldn't want to drink it from a boot, even if it was my boot. Nah. Nah. I mean, like Eric said, hell to the no. <laughs> now, somebody said drink it out of a boot, and they said we'll give you five hundred thousand dollars for doing so. Well, Got to be more than five hundred G's, brother. That's a Gotta different story. Got to be more story. than five hundred G's. Got to be more. <laughs> I don't know about that, Eric. Hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna press a little bit. Maybe they don't want to from in the back office that we don't know about if he did it as a stunt or something. We we have some. I, I would drink it out of your boot, Eric, for five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> wow. wow. Would you drink it out of Bill Belichick's boot? <laughs> well, I don't know. You got to draw a line somewhere. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa! Again with Bill. Belichick. <laughs> you right. he won his sixth Super Bowl. Can we just leave it at that, please? <laughs> Uh, we also have a very on topic uh, couple, a couple of uh, comments from Thrash Metal. He says, Mormons have beliefs that are different from the beliefs of mainstream Christian churches, Rod. Right, right. Mormon but, church considers itself a restoration church. But do they use the same book? Do they use the Bible? He says, this means that the members of the church believe it is the original Christian church started by Jesus Christ and brought back, quote, restored by Joseph Smith Jr. in 1830. Right. right. But they're still following Jesus. That's then he moved on. He said, "Google is great." <laughs> <laughs> then he also says, "You've never been in the military." The dares in in, in, in response to cowboys thrown in his boot drinking ways. Um, but Joseph, I know, oh, I, said, I know Joseph Smith like got them out to Utah and he did the whole track and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's like Jesus did it, and they broke off of Jesus. But it's kind of like. He's still your party starter, so. How does this pertain to all... Rage Yoga again? I'm confused. Because well, <laughs> you use his name in vain every time you're there. <laughs> oh, okay. okay that makes, that's, there you that's, go. Where, that's where the connects yeah. right there. Yeah, there Shut up, a bitch. Let me stress. <laughs> also, also, Cody Stark said the name of his band, if they start someone with Elbow, would be Rod J. Deals, a tribute band. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> because that helped. <laughs> Bourbon <laughs> County Stouts. <laughs> 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 he also said his neighbor had a King Cobra. That's on him. Oh, King Cobra. I, I, I don't think I've ever drank that. That was late past my time when I gave up malt liquor, but I see it to be popular for some of the malt liquor drinkers. Malt liquor yeah. Monday, fool. Sorry, sorry, Eric. Sorry. Just... <laughs> I'm going to have to have a cease and desist on that one. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> cross, cross over the line. Um, and then Thrash also says he's been playing guitar for over 30 years. At least he can make beer on like these bands looking for a niche. Yeah. <laughs> and then Martin Colmer says, beer than whiskey, very risky. Beer than beer, or whiskey than beer, never fear. Well, yeah, well. Yeah. And and Holster Fishing came by, uh came back. I don't know if they've been here the entire time and said hi to Cody. And then Cody said hi to Elbow and Holster Fishing. And then Eric Gilbert said he came in and said, Play play a hater yoga. And I just started thinking about Chappelle's show when he said that. <laughs> well, I didn't even hate a yoga class. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. That would be that funny. Would, would be <laughs> you fought it. You fought it. <laughs> <laughs> you fought it. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, a thrash metal to uh, you know wrap up this whole uh, Jesus Jesus Christ thing. Um, he says the Bible is one of four canonized scriptures of the Latter Day Saints Church. The other three are the Book of Mormon, Doctrine, Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. Nice. <laughs> Again, Google. <laughs> and then Cody, Cody Stark says Eric would drink it out of a coconut. <laughs> and then Eric Gilbert says bring back malt liquor Monday, Eric, because, you know, it needs to come back. Gilbert. Hey, Gilbert, what do you want me to do, buddy? Uh, have you, you ever done a King Cobra, Eric? For I, have, I have done a King Cobra. I haven't done a, what else have you done? a King Cobra. What else have you done, Eric? What, can you remember what you've done? Uh, what well, Colt forty five, Colt forty five. Uh, what is it? High gravity. <laughs> You're just gonna name Colt forty five twice. So. <laughs> <laughs> two different styles. Two different <laughs> styles. <laughs> I've done um, King Cobra two eleven. You do Saint Ides. Saint Ides, yeah. Mickey's. Mickey. Four loco. Four loco. Oh, you did. You can tell uh, the videos that we don't watch, Eric. But. <laughs> 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 I've actually watched some of your Malt Liquor Mondays. I just don't know. You done, I know you've done Blue Bull, right? You've done Red yep. Bull as well? Yep. No, I haven't done Red Bull. I can't find Red Bull. You did Blue Bull? Hey, did you hey, if you guys find Red Bull, send it my way. Uh, probably not, but maybe. <laughs> yeah. You want Red Bull, you said? Yeah, the, the energy Red drink. Bull. Yeah. Slits Red Bull. No, Red Bull. Slits Red Bull. I know. I know. <laughs> Not that one. I'm gonna send him a can of Red Bull Energy drink and be like, "Yeah, I get that. Like, what wings. the hell is this? Yeah. It gives you wings." Uh, what else is? What else have you? Do you know of ones that you haven't done that you can get locally? Uh, I I think I, every, everything I can get locally, I can get. I haven't done High Gravity Old English 800. Oh, that one. That one Ooh. I can't get here. Old English 800. Oh, no, high gravity. High gravity. High gravity. Oh, high gravity. HG, baby. Oh, the HG. Okay, well, if I happened upon that or the uh, Red Bull, I'm totally going to hook you up, Eric. I told you. <laughs> hey, Joe. <laughs> Joe. Hey, Joe, it better be a 40. Oh, I mean, what else is this? Oh, there? yeah. I don't I mean, know. It has, it has to be. I think I'm going to send you like a 24-ounce can or something. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure it's a shatterproof uh, plastic one, too. <laughs> Pack that baby in there. Put it as a mystery beer. What is this one? Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, oh. I guess right away. Oh, it's like a 40-ounce bottle. I'm unsure of what's happening. <laughs> is this a New England style IPA? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to do it on Monday, just in case. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past Joe to put a New England IPA in a 40 ounce bottle. That would be hilarious. But would you, Eric, you, Eric, you do have a package coming your way for me, so you never know. So, right. <laughs> That's You know what? Over the weekend, you totally did. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Eric Gilbert says, how about some high-proof Euro lager? Sun? That's what he actually used the sun. I just emphasis. Throw it in there. Emphasis. I mean, there, is there, when I read sun, 
I say it like Chappelle every time because there's no other way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> how you how you, you do Chappelle. say it every time like that. Yeah, you got to. Like, I mean, I, I just, son. I'm just Chappelle just going, son. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then Thrash says it's, it has to be sponsored by uh, Colt Forty Five, your Malt Liquor Mondays, which totally you can sponsor. I mean, oh, oh, you, you might run really with Joe D's channel. Though. You might need to see if Malt can find off on that. Yeah, maybe you can borrow. You can borrow his <laughs> his <laughs> little. He uh, the contract uh, for Joe. <laughs> he does, but it, but his what you call it is um his uh, Billy D. Yeah, his Billy D. Uh, bobblehead. Billy D. Billy D. And then uh, Cody Stark says, my cousin wants me to brew him a high-gravity lager, LOL. Yeah, LOL indeed, Cody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the common response would be, why? <laughs> Eric's, Eric comes here and he just he says, why does everyone like Malt Liquor Monday? Eric, why not? <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Yeah. I mean, we do, well, Joe wasn't here when we did the Malt Liquor Beer Flow yeah. show. So we yeah. 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 Where were you? Uh, yeah. I, was, um, I wish I wasn't fan. there for that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, not for local. you thought you were going to be cute and be like, I'm not going to drink a real malt liquor. And then you found out why. Yeah, that was, why. That was <laughs> gut-wrenching for sure. You, you would have been better off with a 40 of pretty much anything other than that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give myself but, uh, I would, I would, yeah, if we ever did again and, and I, I was able to make it, I'd get, I'd like Mickey's. I'd definitely get a 40 Mickey's and drink the shit out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mickey's I find a lot of 40s of Mickey's, though. They got the little uh, grenades, on, which sucks. We do a malt liquor beer flow. Do we to get all malt liquor stories? <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's not go down that road again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know if you guys want to relive that. I certainly probably don't. At all? <laughs> well, you didn't live it the first time. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to see it. I don't want to do it. I, no. I like, I didn't actually like Todd and Apex Legends. It's just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ryan. Why does it got to be that way? I, I, like uh, I, I am a champion, so. <laughs> you're, you're the cha the decoy champion? Is that what you're saying? Is that it? Hey. Nobody's much of a decoy as Todd. <laughs> Y'all wasn't there. You don't know. Uh -oh. have been... Hey. Bernie I did. killed as many people as anybody else did on that night. <laughs> we just outlasted everybody. We had to kill the. I killed the last team. I killed the guy then. Oh, okay. Take all the credit, Rod. <laughs> well, the other guy killed. <laughs> which which it was, was all about strategy. <laughs> strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, Cody Stark says, "Oh, come on, let's do malt liquor one week." LOL. Well, they did it, um, Cody, and uh, I, I mean, I was. Everybody was fine. Ty, Todd, Todd was hurt a little bit. You know who else was fine? This guy, because I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> and then Burning Beard, when Eric comes back, uh, he says, uh, "I'm I'm still waiting for my OE and OJ review, aka Brass Monkey." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Eric, Brass Monkey. Eric is supposed to do that. He Eric was supposed let's, to do let's that. Let's when he comes on, but in a, you know, in a friendly way. No, let's not bully him. I said, bully. No, There's no, a difference. What's up to you, Eric? Eric, uh -oh. we have a sweet comment. Uh oh, burning What's a sweet comment. He says, <laughs> he says, "A coconut is the best," and then B. I'm still waiting for my OE and OJ review, aka Brass Monkey. Where is it? Hey, I gotta find a forty of OE first, buddy. Excuses, Burning Beard. This is what we have to deal with. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying to build it forward. That's all. Build it forward. <laughs> yeah. Who, who wants to see that? That's Burning Beard. You burning see Beard. Oh, Burning Beard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Burning so beard. which OE do you need, Eric? Just the regular or whatever? <laughs> it's the regular, <laughs> the regular one. I want, like, just so happens. My core Just, says just some OE. Have. Okay. Yeah. Eric's like, I can't find orange juice. That's what I really need is the orange juice. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll, we'll send you a little, like, maker's kit so you can just put it together. And... Yeah. You, yo, you know what would be interesting idea to do? If you guys wanted to do it, would we do, like, we, we do, like, a beer cocktail episode. So, because beer, craft beer cocktails are, like, pretty popular now with some stuff. So, that might be something interesting. I, I like the malt liquor idea in that round, too. <laughs> you need the liquor, I do oh, God. Yeah, but I only want to be on it if, if, if Todd drinks four locals again. Otherwise, count me out. 
<laughs> Joe, just for you. Yeah, oh, man. I'll drink a four loco with you. All right, done deal. Why <laughs> can I get? The, I think I think New York State has eight percent ones. Please, can you finish? Can you finish one now? I, oh, I can finish a four loco. Would it be a good idea? No, <laughs> not at all. In the lead, terrible idea. No, the one I had was like fourteen percent, and I couldn't even get through half of it. My stomach, my stomach was already like, no. What are you doing? Yeah, my stomach. No is more. Uh, it's okay. Um, no, I, was it the goal? Um. Uh, yeah, I think it was. I think it was. Yo, yo, instead of a malt liquor, since you guys already did that, let's just do a four local episode. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Challenge. Challenge. Yeah, now what's up? Nothing. Yeah, that's right. Good, good job. Good job, Joe. I like I that got, idea. He's like, what the F, man? By the way, whatever week that is, I'm probably not going to make it. Just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you me, right? me either. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> well, I don't know. If you – if you guys want to do a Ford Loco episode, I'll totally get one. You ain't going to finish a whole can of it. So what the oh, fuck? yeah, easily. Easily. I, well, I, I can do something else because I already went down that path. So. It's only like what, fifty, so we don't lose anything if we don't finish I don't it. look at the prices because I don't buy them, but I'll go with you. Buck 50 sounds right. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Trust me, it is. I seriously don't know if New York State has the because remember they they changed them a while ago and they went like someone down to eight percent and I know didn't they get rid of something else too in there like caffeine well, or four loco like here you can't find in Ohio you can still get on the Kentucky side though okay and, I didn't four loco skipped the forty ounce they went straight to like eighty ounces because it felt like I was never gonna get done with that beer ever eighty yeah. ounces I'll look at a four loco <laughs> which will be not much at all, but I'll, I'll look into them and see what the what the percentage is here. And if, if they're like the fourteen percent ones, then yeah, let's let's. Yeah, mine is like fourteen here. We get the big ones. Yeah, we got fourteen here. Yo, know, I can see you sitting at the cooler looking at it, and being like, "What in the hell am I getting myself into?" I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna I'm just... tell you guys they're all eight percent, and then I'll be like, "Oh, I can't get the fourteen percent ones," and then Todd will be like, "I'll send it in the beer mail," and I'll be like, "Fuck." You, <laughs> <laughs> I will say it's the closest thing I ever got to a Rod J deal. Felt like, you know, 14% for a, yeah. a buck. Like, yeah, why not? And it's now a great you, deal. And now you see popular. It's like, yeah, it's like, like yeah, now I know why it's a dollar. Yeah, if you want to get hammered for very cheap and in quick order, <laughs> our local is your friend. It, no, not so much. Not so much. No, it's not his friend, let's be honest. Yeah. I like, I like when Four J Loco is nobody's friend. I like when J.O. made Amos. I don't know if you've seen the uh, the one uh, Rod the review where he made him drink. They did a four local review, and it wasn't it wasn't the great. I didn't see the four local. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Amos was not happy about it at all. Oh. He was very very oh. upset. <laughs> friends don't let friends Amos drink right. four loco. Yeah, first time I met Amos, Amos was one of the section leaders at one of the beer fests we we, oh, we did. It's like the one that Todd did with me last year. He was one of the people in charge. So. That's sweet. I, I, I like Amos. He's a uh, yeah. He's funny. Yeah, guy. he is. Um, Cody Stark says uh, he he said I already mentioned that he witnessed you guys doing the four logo, but then he said Eric's PSA was definitely interesting. It was classic, <laughs> and I remember watching that episode back because I, I watched like the most of it, and I just remember going to the end to see the PSA, and I was like, this this is I can't believe I missed this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then he also says, did you see that natural light natter day beer? I have not. Is that a real beer? Well, that's hope. But I feel like it's real. I mean, um, we get a lot of natural stuff here, so it might be at our, one of our stores. Okay, it's natter days. Um, oh, oh, no. Beer. ABB beer? Oh, like, they're, they're like the four? No, they're like the... They're like the the Bud Light, what you call it, the uh, the flavored beers. Oh my god! Oh, the Bud Light Orange? No, no, the other ones, the uh, the the Bud Light Limeritas. Oh, I think they're like, oh. no, no, actually, okay, never mind, never mind, I'm lying. Oh god, <sighs> they're only four point two percent. They have a strawberry lemonade flavored one, so it's like flavored light beer. It's kind of like I, I think you had it right first with the Bud Light Orange, but yeah, they have a strawberry lemonade one. Look for it in February two thousand nineteen. Now I'm good. Anybody else? Yeah. That's not even on my ABV level. No, I mean, if I'm going <laughs> to drink something like that, it better be for local. Right. <laughs> oh, why, why are they releasing this again? <laughs> I kind of... <laughs> It's basically a, a like a wine cool wine cooler esque basically at this point. Why not just bring back Bartles and James and call it a day? 
Yeah, that shit. Bartles, oh, and James. Bartles and James. <laughs> that shit was delicious. When I was like 12, I'm like, yeah, getting hammered on some Bartles and James. <laughs> Except for I'm drinking like a single bottle and nothing's happening. And I'm like, it's Kool Aid. <laughs> Bartles and James. That was something back in the day. Oh yeah, remember, remember the uh, the two older gentlemen they had. That's what I was just gonna say. Yeah, sitting on the porch yeah. or whatever yeah. on the commercials. Yeah, the guy right. didn't speak. He never spoke on there. Was that Barbara <laughs> or James? I think it was James the one who didn't speak. <laughs> wow, you used uh, burning beard there, Eric. That's messed up, man. Not cool. Not cool. Your punishment is all the four locos. <laughs> <laughs> In one night. In one night. Oh, no, not all in four local flavors. Watermelon one so I can I can be drinking a Jolly Rancher flavored 14% liquid. That's what that I mean. Is, that is beer pong beer. You just doink, doink. Mm. Well, that's what you think, Eric, until it's <laughs> beer flow show night. And we're all drinking the four loco. Oh my god. I think I'm gonna be sick that day. <laughs> <laughs> Four guys do four loco. Watch out! Oh, that would be. The, I think that'd be the best episode. Uh maybe after the malt liquor one. That would that would be that would be interesting for sure. Wake up in the morning, say, "Let me see what happened last night." <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> four and four though, right? Right? Todd, you only drank one. Uh, half of one. I don't even think he drank one. Is pushing it. What was the? Yeah, no, I, I drank a half of one. What are the size of those? Like the 20, uh, 24 ounces, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Dear Lord, what now? 20 <laughs> yeah. Yes. He couldn't get through it. I totally understand. Nobody why. should get through it. Well, honestly, if you do that by ABV, that's like drinking a six-pack of beer in one sitting. <laughs> like just no one way. Day. It was 14 ounces. I think, it was, because he didn't keep, I think it's because he took it out of the paper bag and that kind of threw it off. That was probably the first mistake, <laughs> for sure. Like this, Eric, a 12-ounce, 5% beer is pretty much equivalent to 24 ounces of almost 15% beer. If you do it by six packs, it, it, it's almost equating wow. the amount of alcohol you're drinking. Hey, but it's yeah. a buck 99, so it's like it's Rajay deal. It's Rajay deal at its finest. <laughs> and it tastes <laughs> But with a four local, how much extra sugar is put into that thing, bro? I don't know, know, but it was, it was, oh, uh, that bull it's, making my, it's making my stomach hurt just thinking about it. <laughs> and it doesn't get better. It doesn't get better as it warms up either. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You and your stomach better come to an understanding that in the very near future, it's going to have a round two. That's what it needs to do right now. Just I'm going to put it in the freezer before we start. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about it warming up, huh? That's not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be a terrible thing. 24 ounces. Yeah, just think about that, Joe. I'm getting like halfway through it, and it's like... Oh, okay. No, then, I can't do it no more. I can't. At any, at any point, did you just just like think of like going and getting ice, or maybe putting it outside? You don't have probably had any snow when you guys did it. Hmm. No. You gotta keep it. Never crossed my mind. No, first thought was just pour it down the drain and move on. Yeah, maybe cut, cut your losses. Just cut your maybe, losses and go. Maybe, maybe shotgunning it is the way to go. Uh, uh, oof. Well, the quicker you get home, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's the answer or not. I'm not sure. I would have seen a video of someone shotgun a Fort Loco. That would be so awful. I saw saw someone, this was years ago on uh, YouTube. They probably (laughs) the video still up there. They took a a, a worldwide stout and a 120 minute and just chugged it in like two seconds. I was like, oh man, I couldn't even, probably from a carbonation standpoint, on (laughs) then throw in almost 20 ounce or 20% beer. Mm. Burning Bear says, "Drink two four locos and you wake up with diabetes." That is, <laughs> yes. that, that is that is you quite didn't, accurate. You didn't even go to sleep to get diabetes. That just sets in like instantly. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, for Brimley just pops in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you I think he was sitting. I think he was sitting next to me at, the, at my table once I was done with that. I was did like, you, "What are you doing here?" Did you have like tums nearby to make sure like that you were going to be fine? Like all that acid in that. I, <laughs> I didn't, but that's a good idea, though. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Well, the best idea is never to drink for a local. Beer. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. <laughs> until until the beer flow show. <laughs> that's. <laughs> <laughs> Friends don't let friends drink four loco. <laughs> exactly. I'll let, I'll, let you guys exactly. Know, I'll let you guys know on Saturday the selection we have in the area, and then yeah. we'll figure it out. 
Oh, they have well. a new limited edition. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you they do. They buy all kinds of crazy shit. It's a triple four loco. <laughs> yeah. I'm going with the diabetic oh, meat purple. <laughs> sugar free. <laughs> sugar free. <laughs> I just went to fourloco.com to discover all of Four Locos flavors. How about no? How about I don't? You we went to this? fourloco.com? Oh, yeah. I got to find out all the flavors. <laughs> oh, shit. We're going to see some yeah. IP. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, they have a bold series. So I'd like a cardiac cherry. They have a bold series? A, what's a bold series? Aren't they all bold? I, they have four frost and four blaze. <laughs> what, what is that? Um, well, the the write up says setting the night on fire begins the moment you crack open a drink like Blaze. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the kind of drink that reminds you the night's possibilities are truly limitless. <laughs> you have to one of those for sure. And this is the best line I've ever seen from a company. <laughs> You can end your night in a hot tub or in a different country. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the description. Holy Be shit. Be like, Netflix and chill with Four Loco. Oh, the worst Four Loco is the aware for uh, the self aware Four Loco, man. Unbelievable. <laughs> What is uh, that's great? That is, that is some crazy stuff. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, is right what's now? the EBV level on there? Fourteen percent, and they're twenty three point five ounces, so not quite twenty four, but oh yeah, okay, close that. enough. <laughs> you did that after extra half, half I, I knew have... there, I knew there was a camo coat. He said his cousin prefers the camo green. Oh man, yeah, they had they have camo green. They have, they have a bartender series. <laughs> what is that? Okay, they have Blue Mofo, Purple Hooter, and Poop Storm. <laughs> Blue Mofo? He's got the ones I'm getting. 10%. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. That's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Yeah, so for the Camel series, they have Sour Apple, Fruit Punch, Watermelon, Peach, Strawberry, Lemonade, Grape, and then they have Sour Grape, which does not sound appeasing. <laughs> we have Red, Black, and Gold. They're not flavors. They're they ran out of fruit. They're like, oh, just call it this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Ooh, now, now we have to do it. I mean, there's no choice. Oh, God, please don't. <laughs> oh, no, I agree with you, Eric. I don't want to do it. I already, yeah. I already been down that road. I don't want to go back. All right. What I'll, I'll Okay, to make up for it, I will buy a Four Loco and drink it one night. Then if you guys are going to pussy out. Oh, I, I didn't say I don't believe you're going to do it. I'll do it. I'll fucking totally do it. It's on me, but I'll do it. You have to send us a picture of you with a can just so we know you actually bought one. No, we have to make sure he's yeah. actually drinking it. He can take a yeah. picture of it. Figure it to somebody I'll, I'll, just, I'll drink it on camera. I, every well, no, no, yeah, no. I just meant you just got to take a picture of the can that you actually purchased one oh, so we can go out and buy one. On, when I go out Saturday and I, I go grocery shopping, I'll, I'll, you know, in our Facebook channel, I'll just show you guys some pictures of the selection. Okay. <laughs> I saw Drunken One say he ain't scared. I'm like, Drunken was not scared. <laughs> <laughs> Drunken One, you have to do this if you if we do it. You have to get one too. He's, he's, this, this he's is not scared you, of anyone. This is what you expect from a guy named fucking Drunken One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moment that he shines. Drunken like, One is like the rock when it comes to drinking. Just bring it. <laughs> Drunken One, be scared. Be very scared. Uh, well, wait a minute. Drunken One, can you even get four local in Texas? That's that's a good. They don't. They're, they're gonna call it an ale. <laughs> <laughs> Can't call it beer. Call it beer. <laughs> Those crazy Texas laws. Oh man. Eric Gilbert says Tums won't work. Alka Seltzer. <laughs> That man with work experience. Either. A man with experience. And then uh, Brian, uh, who is Thrash Home uh, Th Thrash Metal Homebrew, says, "Have a wonderful rest of your evening, gents. Cheers. Cheers." Okay. Thanks, Brian. Cheers. Thanks for hanging out. Cody Stark says my cousin prefers the four local camel green, as you said, which no one should prefer anything. That's <laughs> what so I was going to say. He actually prefers it. They prefer no you not give me any. 
<laughs> and then Burning Beer says their best seller is called The Blackout, I'd imagine. <laughs> even though I imagine he's joking, I he might not be, actually. I don't even know. Who knows at this point? How was it? I don't remember. I guess I'll have to try it again next time. <laughs> yep. Eric Gilbert says, get blazed when drinking blaze. I think that's the, that's what they're going for. But you know. Cody Stark says about 23 ounces is too much. What do you do with the other half ounce? <laughs> talking about Ford Loco 2, Eric Gilbert's will settle down. Um, what else we got going on? We have Miss Poppy. Uh, she says, Happy Valentine's Day, Lushes. Hey, Miss Poppy. Happy Bye. Valentine's Day. <laughs> Cody Stark says, Ford Loco Camel Green looks like anti <laughs> <laughs> you're really You're really helping us out here, Cody. You want us to go out there right now and, and buy them all. Uh, so Eric Gilbert says, Stick them all in the cellar. Soon balance out with all the sugar. Maybe. <laughs> um, Perhaps. Foamy Head says he's drinking a Sweetwater 420 appropriate G13 IPA. Yeah, I like that. I was drinking that the last couple weeks. How you like that one, Foamy? Yeah. Uh, Miss Poppy says, I'm drinking a ginger ale, so I guess I'll be the designated driver. I'm, I'm drinking a water, so I'm there with you. She says, I have to warn you, I have no license, though. Well, that's going to get <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a whole other topic right there. <laughs> Drunk, truck, and one, <laughs> truck and one says in reference to the four loco and, and getting one, he says, oh, yeah, got to cross the tracks to get them. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Eight mile. I gotta go to eight mile for yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I might have to cross eight mile to get the Red Bull time. I feel like Broken <laughs> One would definitely do it though. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> definitely doing it. <laughs> oh, yo, you know he is. You know he is. Uh, <laughs> well, Eric, I'll be right back. Oh, great! You like it, Foamy? Nice to hear. I thought it was really decent. I actually uh, would pick that one up again for sure. That 420 G13. I don't think I've had that one. Yeah, so Sweetwater. I don't know if you get Sweeter, Sweetwater where you're at, Eric. Mm -hmm. Is uh, that the one with the Loch Ness Monster on it or whatever it was yeah, that the Shannon said that night? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the fish. I thought, if she would have said like Slimer from Ghostbusters or something like that, yeah. I was like, okay. <clears throat> yeah, Did you finish all those, Rob? <laughs> Yeah, I finished them all. I did a review on the one. I haven't uploaded it yet, though. <laughs> Eric Come. Gilbert said Miss Poppy would probably drive better than most licensed drivers. Probably so. Probably so. <laughs> <laughs> she says she put salt in her boss's coffee. Didn't like his attitude. <laughs> <laughs> There, well, we've been going for a bit on here. I think Joe had to step away for a second. Probably had to go shake hands with the president. So, <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, Grant, what's going on, man? Glad to see you drop in, sir. But uh, at this point, I was going to say I was going to turn it over to Eric because we're approaching midnight. You want me to do my PSA now? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's kind of a segue there. Come on. Well, well Miss Poppy, Poppy said, "Did we get any candy?" Didn't get. I gave candy. I didn't get any candy, but I never. I get. I gave a uh, four four pack mixer for Valentine's Day. Nice. You gave Shannon a four pack mixer. Yeah. What What was a four pack mixer of? Uh, it was the uh, Saga Talk Neapolitan Stout. Nice call. Nice call. Uh, this one of the I got two of these by mistake. I didn't mean to get two of them, but the peanut butter peanut butter porter that I had, and then um, what was the other one? I forget what the other one was. Now a fan. I think it was the. Uh, I can't remember. I, I'd have to look. I forget now. So it was actually three different ones. But it should have been four. That was my she, mistake. She liked the Neapolitan style. Oh, yeah. That, that one's really good. Yeah. And it was the last one they had in the store, so I got lucky. I was drunk one got peanut butter cups. Yeah, yeah. He had his little quick video today. Yeah. Four pack of beer and some Reese's. Burning beer says, seems like a lot of four local reviews have a vomit alert in the title. Good luck, boys. <laughs> As they should. 
Yo, I got this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll turn it over to Eric here. Uh, definitely appreciate everybody that hung in there tonight and checked the stuff out. And again, make sure you check out some of the people in the chat at all the different channels. You can subscribe to them as well. <clears throat> For sure. Guys, if you had too much to drink, please get a designated driver. Guys, in this day and age, it's stupid to drive home drunk because if you do, you're going to get pulled over by the cops. They're going to make you do the stupid ass sobriety test. They're going to make you look like a fool. They get a free ride to jail. They're going to have court fees and impossible prison time. If you hit or kill somebody, you guys are going to be in the slammer for a while. If you kill yourself, all you've done is hurt your family, friends, and put yourself six feet under, okay? Just sleep off your bus, get your car the next day, have the, have the bartender get your ride, have someone at the bar get your ride, or take advantage of the apps on your phone, Uber, Lyft. You know, in this day and age, it's just stupid to do it. And please just don't drive home drunk, okay? Yeah, don't do it. So, which come on, some of you guys thought Eric might flow up a little bit. I know, I was just he drank a good amount, but he did well. He got it done and point across. So, nailed it. He nailed it. Stuck the landing. <laughs> like an American gymnast. Better than the malt liquor video we did. Oh, the malt liquor is a classic one now. <laughs> <laughs> that was classic. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, but thanks for everybody who tuned in. You know, definitely drink responsibly out there. And, Joe, anything you want to close out with? See not you in a month. All. Not at all. Yeah, yeah. see you in about, oh, I don't know, <laughs> six weeks, give or take. Six weeks. I'm going to try to make sure I get on every other every other Thursday if I can, at the very least. Yeah. Joe kill all the people you need to kill so you can get your Thursday night free. Most of them are dead. Okay. Okay. This is booty okay. apparel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no case. <laughs> Hot oh, commodity oh, these, still online these online. days. Yeah. <laughs> Todd, anything you want to close out with? No. Hoping for a little bit warm weather for Saturday for my beer fest. But yeah. Outside of that, drink good beer. Yeah, so hopefully beer. next week Todd will have a nice report from us from the beer fest he went to. So that should be a good time. And then uh as far as me, I'll be getting some more reviews uploaded tomorrow and this weekend. And for those of you watching the channel and following. I mentioned last week I went to a schedule. So we're doing the beer flow Thursdays and then I'm uploading reviews Friday and Saturday and then something on Sunday, kind of a wild card type day. Although last week it was a review as well. And then just kind of getting some more stuff. So I can get some other stuff looked at. So I can uh, make it a little easier to get some other good stuff out to you guys. But thanks for everybody that watched. Thanks for everybody that liked and subscribed, all that good stuff. We will catch you guys next week and look forward to uh, talking to you then. Keep drinking those good craft beers. Remember, there's always time. Get your beer on. Cheers. Still here. <laughs> <laughs>